six yard line and Jake Locker will bring his offense out onto the field. The junior out of Ferndale, Washington, 6'3", 226 pounds. You see some of his impressive numbers. Of course, a change in offensive philosophy this year. He has made a nice adjustment, getting more comfortable in the pocket, but the threat of the leg still very much there. Yeah, he's still very much a, a threat anytime he has the football in his hand of running it and making something great happen, but it has been his improvement throwing the football that's helped his team to improve. Locker on first down, rolling to his right, an open target, and the ball is dropped by Jermaine Curse. Curse has become a, a very popular target for Jake Locker. As you take a look at the Husky offensive line, Drew Schaefer has moved in at left tackle recently. Ben Osai, who started the left tackle, goes to left guard. Some very talented, skilled players. Curse, Johnson, Aguilar, Cavario, Middleton, and Polk, the running back who could reach 1,000 yards tonight. And you look at Jermaine Curse, who in the last two ball games has four touchdown receptions. Second down and ten and the handoff to Polk. Yards after contact, that is where he really gets his bread and butter as he takes it out across the 30-yard line as we take a look at a Cougar defense that has been decimated by injuries this season. The true freshman, Travis Longo, has been outstanding, a very bright future. Andy Mattingly, the best probably of those three linebackers, although a pretty steady group. And the challenge for these defensive backs contain Jake Locker and those Husky wide receivers. Those DBs are going to get tested today, that's for sure. Third down and five for the Dogs. Locker with time with an open receiver. That's Devin Aguilar as he gets out to the 37-yard line and a first and ten for the Washington Huskies. And Aguilar, the sophomore out of Denver. Yeah, here you see you just... Uh Aguilar just running a nice little hitch route, man-to-man -man coverage, getting to the sticks, make sure he make, made the catch. And that's what you want to do here early on. You want to make the catches everything. You're not necessarily worried about the run after the catch. You just make the catch, move the sticks, and keep the ball moving. There's down Polk, not much there. So he takes it out across the 40 to the 41-yard line, and the uh, Mattingly in on the tackle for Washington State. So you were looking for Chris Polk to do, continue to do what he's been doing all year long which is running an extremely physical, and there you see it, yards after contact. He's got three extra yards after he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Three-yard gain. This Cougar defense last in the conference in points allowed, just over 39 per contest. Locker out of the gun. Flag on the play as he finds Aguilar, and no gain on that play. And we'll see what the infraction is on that second down play. Not only do the Cougars uh, allow 39 per game last in the conference, they're last in the conference in run defense, pass defense, and total defense. Personal foul on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Jermaine Kurtz called for the personal foul. And that'll back the Huskies up 15 yards. That's definitely not something that the head coach that uh, you want to see, especially early on in the football game. Jermaine cursed that first pass by Jake Locker, dropped it, left the ball on the ground, then that time getting a personal foul. Make sure that he gets his head in the game because they're going to need him to make some big plays out there if they're going to have a chance to win. So that brings up second down and 22 for the Huskies from their own 26-yard line. Four wide receivers for Locker, three to his left. And Polk in the backfield. Curse. Out to the 30 and dropped right around the 31. Myron Beck tied in, in on the play. Chima Wachiku also in on the stop for Washington State. And Mike Ledgerwood. Let's take a listen to this. Oh. That's Mike Ledgerwood, a backup linebacker, six foot two, twenty-seven, sophomore out of Kennewick Riverview High School, who put the hit on that play. Uh, you can you can see early on here that Paul Wolf has been stressing to his team. It's important that we start off well, especially in the first quarter. Men outscored 173 to six, and you see it right now his defense flying around making plays. Receivers for Locker as he buys time and throws incomplete. Xavier Hicks Jr. with the coverage on Jermaine Curse, and the Huskies will be forced to punt away. So a very encouraging start.
for a Cougar defense that has had some issues, especially in the first quarter of games this season. They have, and that's the reason why we talk about when you have a rivalry game like this, you can throw those records right out of the right out of the equation because these guys are out here. It's a grudge match. These are guys that they're familiar with. All these guys probably played together, played against each other in high school, and so they want to come out and put their best foot forward and have a great performance tonight. And they hang on to punt for the Huskies. Gino Simone, the freshman, signals the fair catch, loses the football. It's still loose, still on the ground. Cougars and Huskies still scrambling. And a big pile and flags on the play. Simone, the true freshman out of Skyline High School in Sammamish, east of Seattle. And obviously quite a bit to sort out here. First of all, the penalty, and then also who came up with possession. Washington State possession. And a huge break for the Cougars. That could have been a disaster as Simone dropped that football. Scoreless early at Husky Stadium at the 102nd Apple Cup. Avatar, a James Cameron movie event, showcases the Apple Cup on FSN. Avatar in theaters December 18th. Penalty against the Huskies as we take a look. Gino Simone signaling for the fair catch. And it's Jordan Polk getting too close to Simone. So interference on Polk as the players chase down the football. And with that penalty, it will be Washington State football at the uh, Cougar 42-yard line. As you take a look at the seniors starting this contest, Kevin Lapina, 6'3", 241, out of Pleasanton, California. Modest numbers this year. He's played. Marshall Lobestall, who's the backup today, has also gotten some playing time. And a true freshman, Jeff Toole, who is listed as third on the depth chart today. But it is Lapina to lead this Cougar offense on its first possession. Lapina changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Dwight Tardy, senior tailback. And a gain of one for Tardy as we take a look at the Washington State Cougars starting a lineup. The offensive line decimated by injury. Guys in and out all season long. The best of the bunch, Kenny Alfred. He'll be playing in the East-West Shrine game, the center. And there are your skill folks. Tardy out of the backfield, number 31. He will be the first Cougar in history to be the team's leading rusher four consecutive years. Also receivers, Gino Simone, Jeffrey Solomon, the very talented Jared Karstad, a sophomore out of Ferris High School in Spokane. He is a big target for this Cougar offense. Pitch to Tardy. Not a lot going on there as Court Dennison was the first dog, I believe, to get to Tardy. We take a look at the UW defense up front. Daniel Teo Nessheim. The best of that group, Cameron Elisar, has been bothered by neck stingers this year. Donald Butler, one of the top linebackers in the Pac-10. And Desmond Trufant, a true freshman. There he is, number six. Of course, his brother Marcus made a name for himself as a Washington State Cougar. Third down and eight. Lapina feeling some heat. Throws Karstetter. With the reception and a first down at the Husky 45-yard line. And Mack, a nice job by Lapina to buy himself some time, feeling that heat off the backside. Yeah, Lapina did a great job of using his legs to sort of get out of the situation here. He was coming down on him. He had Daniel Taylor that time. And uh, he just bought himself a few more minutes, a few more kicks on the clock, found the open receiver, and delivered the football. That was a great job by him. Jared Karstetter with his 35th reception this season with that catch. And Lapina getting the play from the sideline. First down and 10. And at the tardy. He's hit hard by number nine, Donald Butler, middle linebacker, the 6'1 senior out of Sacramento. 
Second in the Pac-10 in tackles with 84 this season. 11 and a half tackles for loss. Well, you see Butler makes it a, a great tackle right there in the hole because there was nobody backing him up. If Tardy would have got through there, he would have definitely been in the second level and uh, very easily. So great play by him. Stopped an even bigger play. And again, Lapina waits for the signal. There's three backup quarterbacks on the Cougar sideline sending it in. Two are obviously dummy signals. Lapina, Harstetter, throw to another Washington State first down, and he has it at the Husky 34-yard line. Well, this is exactly the start that I'm sure Coach Paul Wolf wanted to see his team jump off to. Uh, Lapina actually was a starting quarterback last year when they won the Apple Cup. And uh, he's just looked he's just looked really sharp here in the first quarter so far. He's living the bar the car standard. Big target at 6-4. Paul Wolf looking to go to 2 and 0 oh in this Apple Cup rivalry as a head coach. Trips left for Lapina. And a little trickery back to Lapina from Tardy. The deep throw by Lapina, an open Cougar, and it's incomplete off the hands of Gino Simone. Well executed play with the exception of the most important part right at the end. You got to catch the football, and you got to, I mean, this was just a great play. They got it set up perfectly. Tardy throws it back to Lapina. Lapina throws it to a wide open, wide open receiver in the end zone, and you got to find a way to come up with that catch, Tom. I don't care what you got to do if you got to dive for it, keep running, don't misjudge the ball, whatever. It's plays like that that can get you beat and you end up wondering about it at the end of the game. That would have been huge for the Cougars in this contest. Second down and 10 at the Washington 34. Prior to the snap, full start on number 54 in the offense. Down. So a procedure call against the Cougars. Paul Wolf's team will back it up five yards. Yep, yeah, that was Zach Williams that time. I think got a little dumpy in there, holding it in there. The, the crowd noise could be a factor today for Washington State. You got an almost packed house here in Husky Stadium, and uh, they're doing everything they can to help their team get a win. Jason Styles, our on-field analyst. Jason, an encouraging start so far for Washington State. Well, an encouraging start, but I think that last penalty is uh, illustrative of when teams are struggling, they end up shooting themselves in the foot when good things are happening. The Huskies did it in their first drive on a big penalty, and we'll have to see if the Cougars can recover from that. The swing pass to Tardy. Mason Foster has him wrapped up and forces him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. One of the things that the Cougars are going to have to do here today, guys, is establish the run. We've seen them get some early rhythm plays, some nice easy hits, some curl routes with that Husky defense with secondary playing off. But in order for this Cougar offense to maintain rhythm and find some identity, which is something that during the week they talked about, they have not found that identity. They're going to have to run the football. Now third and long, though, you will be sure they're going to the air. Tardy out, LeBron admits number 34 in for Washington State on third and 11. Play clock down to four. And Pina just does not get it off in time. I think we're going to have a delay. I thought he had just beaten that clock. Prior to the snap, timeout, Washington State, number one. Timeout taken by Paul Wolf. I thought he was concerned, apparently, about where that play clock was headed, and maybe they were looking at another five-yard penalty. Cougars trying to keep the drive alive here in the first quarter. Cougars, Huskies, scoreless, 8.06 left in the first quarter of this uh, Apple Cup 2009 edition at Husky Stadium. As Washington State looks at a third and 11 from the Husky 35-yard line. Dwight Tardy has returned to the Cougar lineup. And once again, the flag on the field. The illegal procedure call. 
False start, number 78 on the offense. And this will go against the Cougars. And yeah. Mackinac struggling football team. Drop passes, penalties, timeouts you don't want to take early. That can add up. That can add up, and it can spell disaster for your football team, especially one that's offensively been struggling in the first quarter, being outscored 173 to six points. You're seeing now a little bit of why that stat is the way it is. You come out of a timeout, the last thing you should do is have a penalty and back yourself back up five more yards. Up from third and 11 to third and 16 for the Cougars. Pina, flushed out of the pocket, in trouble. Daniel Teo Nessheim has a hold of him and he will not let him go. The sack for Teo Nessheim and the punt team will be coming on for Washington State. Yeah, I tell you what, that defensive line was definitely coming off the ball on that one. Here you see those guys are just collapsing the pocket. There is no way for Lapina to stand in there and look for an open receiver, and he has to start scrambling and uh, scrambling for his life, and he doesn't have the ability, importantly, to look down the field to find an open receiver because he's scrambling. Seven and a half sacks for Daniel Teonessheim as Reed Forrest comes on to punt for the Cougars. Which is just over 43 per punt. And that ball is fielded nicely inside five-yard line. Cut on the run by Jeffrey Solomon. College football on FSN is brought to you by Sterling Savings Bank, now more than ever. By the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. By Dairy Queen, for a limited time at DQ, enjoy a double cheeseburger combo basket for just $3.99. And by Woodmer, Ordinary Brothers, Extraordinary Beer. For Jake Locker, and Husky offense out for their second possession here in the first quarter, operating from their own five-yard line. Chris Polk up the middle and a gain of about four yards. Guys, something to look for as this game continues to develop is watch how often the Cougars are changing their defensive front. Early on this season, they were healthy. They're a 4-3 football team, but due to injuries and a number of other circumstances, they've had to switch to a three-man front. And quite frankly, if you don't have the personnel to run a three-man front, it's really tough to be a good run stop in defense. Mac, I'm sure you faced that 3-4 a number of times, and if they don't have that nose guard to be able to control both A-gaps, that offense is going to go right after you. No, as I tell you what, as an offensive player, you love to play against a 30 team because you got ready-made gaps in there over those guards, and it's easier to run the football. Once again, Chris Polk right up the gut, and Jason, he found a pretty good gap there as he gets a Husky first down. No question about it. You know, one of the things that running the football does, you get one successive play that goes well, then another one, you start to get that momentum. You put the defense on their heels a little bit, and that offensive line, just like every other player on the field, they like to collectively find a rhythm. Two good run plays for the Huskies here on their second series of the game. First down and 10, Rocker with two wide receivers to the right. And off to Polk, and not much there as he's ridden down by the true freshman, Travis Long, 6'4", 247, out of Gonzaga Prep. Six and a half tackles for loss this season and two sacks. And this is a, this is a young man they are really high on. Yeah, I asked Coach Wolf if there was anybody on that defense where you said if I had 11 more guys, or 22 more guys like this, I, we would be just fine. I said, who is that guy? He said, Travis Long, the true freshman. And so uh, it's good to see him out there making plays, and he's doing some great things on defense. Three-yard gain for Polk. Second down and seven. Locker with the pump. And Paul Homer, the fullback, with a short game. Paul Homer is senior out of Omaha, Nebraska. Max got it like that, giving the fullback a little love early in the ball game. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Les Schwab League leaders. And when you talk about total offense in the Pac-10, it is number 10, Jake Locker, leading the way. Just over 257 yards per contest. Third down and four for the Huskies. Locker with three receivers to his left. Swings it out to Polk. It's a block. Gets the first down and more. He's brought down with the 37, 38 yard line. Mike Ledgerwood with the tackle for the Cougars. Well, you see right there the reason why Chris Polk is uh, the player that uh, he's been all year long. The reason why he's uh, probably going to become the first freshman, first uh, UW freshman to run for 1,000 yards this year. He plays like that. I mean, he just uh, refuses to go down and be tackled and uh, always gets yards after contact. 14 yard gain on the play. 
Chris Polk with his first reception in the contest. He's carried the ball five times for 22 yards. Walker, good time. They'll go deep, far sideline, and overthrows the intended receiver, Jermaine Curse. Today's first and ten marker is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino. Jason, do you have a, a feel right now for what this Husky offense is trying to get accomplished? Well, it looks like early on, obviously they want to get Chris Polk going, but they're loosening up that secondary. This is a secondary that has had a lot of injuries and had a lot of youth playing out there. So the Huskies trying to take a shot downfield with one of the strengths of their team, and they were not successful. Second down and 10. Polk trying to find some room, and not much there. Chima Wachiku coming up from his strong safety spot to make the initial contact on Polk. It was interesting to see uh, Washington State playing so well on the defense because one of the things Paul Wolf said about his defense this year, we asked him especially about those first quarters, he said, you know, we were asking him, what do you think is probably contributing to the reason why there's such a discrepancy in points? He said, well, maybe I think our, our defense may have lost a little bit of confidence in our offense, just a little bit, because of the, their inability to be able to score points. Make it backfield to Locker out of the shotgun with five wideouts. Quarterback draw, no, a throw. Curse, unable to hang on to the football, and it falls incomplete. But guys, here's a great example of what happens if you don't get something positive on first and second down. You see Jake Locker has the ability to scramble on a mid-yarder's play. Maybe he's able to turn it up another notch to get that first down. But anytime you're third and long yardage, you're forced to put that ball downfield into a tight space, and very more often than not, it falls incomplete like that. Uh, Gino Simone with the drop for the Cougars. That was a drop that uh, Curse, I'm sure, felt he should have had. Absolutely. Mahan with the punt. Simone signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 21-yard line. But Washington State certainly encouraged by this first quarter performance against the Huskies. 3.50 left in the opening court. Three fifty left in the opening quarter. Washington State and Washington scoreless here at Husky Stadium. I'll tell you what you want to talk about a, uh, for the most part, a competitive decade of football in this rivalry. Take a look at those scores. Don't look at that first one from 2000. <laughs> right. You can ignore that one. But uh, the rest of them, a, a good example of uh, how these teams really get after each other. And the Washington Huskies come into this game as a 24 and a half point favorite. But it hasn't looked that way so far, Matt. No, and I think you, with a rivalry week, you have to throw those those things out of the window. I mean, that's the reason why I, I don't know how they were a 24-point favorite because these teams know each other so well. These players are used to playing against each other in high school and they've been around each other, grew up together at different different junctures, and so for them to uh, be uh, that far of that much of a discrepancy in their in the point total, I don't even understand that. And they're keeping the football. Pick up a yard, maybe two, as he faked the handoff to Tardy. Kevin Lapina can run the football uh, pretty well. Not Jake Locker-esque, but again, he has the capability of busting some pretty good runs out of that quarterback position. Well, it's just really hard when they make you one-dimensional, when all you can do is throw the football. The defense can just think totally different than they would if you were more two-dimensional and you had a, a, a running game that could threaten. Gain of two brings up second down and eight. And there you see what goes on before every play with the backup quarterbacks, all three sending in signals, but of course Lapina knows which one to get the play from. Carstetter with a drop. And that would have been a Washington State first down. These, these can be costly, costly uh, missed opportunities here. You saw that one, a little razzle-dazzle where Tardy threw the ball back to Lapina. Lapina threw it to the open receiver. He dropped it in the end zone. They are dropped for an obvious first down. These things come back to haunt you. You have to make those plays when you get, get in those situations. So Jared Carstetter, with that size at 6'4", he becomes a real threat in the red zone. Husky fans pumping up the volume here on third and eight. The 
Pina intercepted by the Huskies, and this could go for a pick six. Mason Foster brought down though inside the 15 at the 13 yard line. Daniel Blackledge, the intended receiver, but a terrific job, Jason, by Mason Foster reading that play. Well, and pressure caused it. The right guard got beat, got in Lapina's face. He got rid of it a little bit sooner than he wanted to, and Mason Foster all over the top of it, and Lapina takes a huge hit at the end of that play right in the back, and that's exactly what he's holding right now as he lays on the turf. So there's the hit. Lapina obviously shaken up. Marshall Lobestall is listed as the backup. If Lapina is unable to continue when the Cougars get the football back. That pass, by the way, was intended for Gino Simone. It was Blackledge who made the tackle, preventing Foster from getting into the end zone. And everybody, of course, remembers maybe the definitive play for this Husky team this year. And that was the ball off the foot of Arizona's De La Sean Dean that Mason Foster picked off and went for the distance in a uh, critical play here in a win over Arizona. As you look at Marshall Lobestall beginning to warm up, 6'3", 214, redshirt sophomore out of Oak Harbor High School. Yeah, Mason Foster is making a name for himself as a big play, a big, big playmaker on that defense. I mean, he's uh, he's gotten timely interceptions and fumble recoveries and uh, really turned the tide for his team. So uh, it's good to see him out there uh, making plays once again. Hate to see that with uh, with Lapina. You never want to see a player laying out there on the field, and that's been one of the things, one of the Achilles' heels for Washington State this year, is that they've had a number of people, even quarterbacks, that have gone down with injuries. There's he's favoring maybe his right shoulder, right side. That's where he took the hit. And we hope the uh, senior has a chance to return to this football game. Locker on first down and 10. Into the end zone, overthrows the intended receiver, Chris Polk. I think he know he had him. He had him open, but it was for a short period. I think the best thing Jake Locker did on that play was overthrow him because that that might have been a pick going the other way. Boy, guys, and I'm standing right down here on the field. That just that's just a touch ball. Jake's got to have. He didn't even give him a chance. I mean, the ball landed four yards out of bound. You throw that even just a little bit inside, let Curtis or Chris run to it. You've got yourself six. Second down and ten. The pitch to pull. And the play strung out. Nice job that time defensively for uh, Washington State by Anthony Lorenzi, a 6'3", 290 redshirt freshman. You can see what uh, the major issue has been for this Cougar team in the first quarter. Complete domination by the opposition, 173 to 6. They've been outscored in first quarters this year, roughly 15 to nothing on average per game. That's very difficult to overcome. Your game plan, your desire to want to run the football usually goes out the door rather quickly. Third and ten for the Huskies. Walker with time. With an open target at the six and nothing more there for Paul Homer. Myron Beck with the tackle for the Cougars. Well, you see Paul Homer there, I mean, being a fullback, he got to make a little nifty move. He's going to have to make a guy miss in order to at least get the first down, let alone the touchdown. But this, this is something that Washington State early on in the year did really well. Early in the season, the team led the Pac-10 in red zone defense. And so you see them uh, being able to stiffen up and to keep the uh, Huskies out of the end zone this time. Eric Folk on for the 24-yard field goal attempt. And it is good. Folk now six for six on field goal tries this season between 20 and 29 yards as the Huskies strike first with 138 left here in the first quarter. FSM presents a Sunday College Hoops quadruple header beginning with the championship game in the Great Alaska Shootout. Cougars involved in that. They'll be taking on San Diego. Plus, Nebraska battles USC. And the 11th ranked Tar Heels take on Nevada. The day rounds out from Seattle as 14th ranked Washington hosts the Montana Grizzlies. Coverage tips off tomorrow at 11.30 on FSN and FSN HD. So you can get your uh, hoops filled tomorrow. We got football for you here this evening from Seattle, the 102nd Apple Cup, the Washington Huskies.
with a three-point lead, three nothing as we are inside of two minutes left in this opening quarter. Paul Whipple's got to feel very good about that series, though, because after, typically after you throw an interception down here in the other team's red zone, and to keep the team from, from getting seven, to hold them to three points, that was a great accomplishment for them. As I look down on the uh, Cougar bench, Kevin Lapina without his helmet sitting down. So it looks like Marshall Lobestall will be on the field. Kickoff fielded around the 17 and brought out near the 30-yard line. And let's uh, connect with Jen Mueller and get uh, maybe the latest on Mr. Lapina. Jen? Well, he will sit at least one series after suffering a right shoulder stinger. The training staff says that it is coming around, but he's going to need at least a series to figure out if that strength will come back and allow him to play. For now, Marshall Lobesall is in the game. The Cougs like his mobility and his ability th to throw over the freshman Jeff Tool, guys. All right, Jim, first down and 10 for the Cougars at the 29-yard line. If you look at the numbers, for Lobestall, the sophomore out of Oak Harbor. And a timeout taken, the second in this opening quarter by the Cougars. So some confusion prior to a first down play, and you would think when you leave that sideline, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what you're going to run. Yeah, I think this is probably a little bit of confusion on Marshall Lobostall's uh, side. You know, typically when you come, like you said, when you're coming off the uh, sideline, everybody should know exactly what play you're going to run. It should, everybody should, it should already be communicated. This is the first play we're going to run. Probably a run, especially when you're changing quarterbacks right in the middle of the game. You probably don't want him sitting back there dropping back the pass. Give it to the running back. Let him make some, some uh, let him get a blade of grass or whatever, and, uh, and they go from there. But to have to call it, burn another timeout here in the second quarter, uh, in the first quarter, rather, uh, that, that could be detrimental. Yeah, guys, and I'm right down on here, the Cougar sideline. There's a personnel group issue. They didn't have the guy in that they needed, that extra tight end, for the play that they had called. And Lobestall again looking over to the Cougar sideline. As he apparently calls the audible and changes the play. And off to Mitz. LeGuan Mitz stacked up for no gain. Donald Butler, the first Husky on the scene. And a lot of what the Cougars are doing is they're lining up in a specific personnel grouping as, he, as the second tight end now comes off the field. And then based upon what the Husky defense is doing, they're making adjustments on the field. Sometimes they're sticking with it. Sometimes they're changing the play based upon that defensive alignment. Second down and nine. Jeff Tool, number 10, is the true freshman. The barring injury would have been starting today, but still an issue with stability in the knee cap. Mitz with a reception out of the backfield. With a nice pickup near a first down. Maybe have brought him down, uh, brought down just short at the 38 and needed to get out to the 39-yard line. Lagwan Mitz is a big man. He is a big running back, and when he has the ball in his when he has the ball in his hand, he can he can make some things happen. So uh, if he's going to be the running back, he's going to get a, a a lot of carries. Well, he had a 57-yard touchdown run in last year's Apple Cup, so he is capable of the big play. Lobestall taking care of business himself, and it's first down for Washington State. The clock ticks, 15 seconds left in this first quarter at Husky Stadium. Like and it looks like the clock yeah, rock. Cougars will be yep. content. Lopestall will head to the sideline to talk it over with his offensive coordinator, Todd Sturdy, and head coach Paul Wolf. The first quarter, very competitive. The favored Huskies had to battle for their three points. Second quarter action is coming your way on FSN. Welcome back to Husky Stadium in Seattle, the 102nd Apple Cup as we get ready for the second quarter. Husky lead of 3 to nothing over the Cougars. And uh, Matt, considering how first quarters have gone this season for Washington State, even though they're trailing, that may have been their best first quarter of the uh, season. No question. I mean, they're only down by three points, and they could have been down by seven. 
and yet uh, they're on the road, they're in a hostile environment, they don't have a lot of fans here necessarily, and so for these guys to still be in it at this point is great. And Jason, that can only give the Cougars confidence, even though they came in as heavy underdogs. The longer you let these guys hang around, the more they're going to believe. I agree. I think first quarter has missed opportunities on both sides uh, and with the trick play for the Cougars and the missed touchdown pass by Jake Locker. Robestall deep. The ball batted away by Nate Williams, the intended receiver for the Cougars on that play. Let's take another look at it. It was Jeffrey Solomon. Yeah, he just uh, he kind of threw it up a little bit. Great play by the safety just to get his hand up and distract just Adam, a little bit. And Adam Long, the cornerback, had uh, good coverage as well that time on Solomon. And no running room for Mitts whatsoever. Theo Nessheim leading the Husky tacklers on that play. You know, you can make an argument for not really beating your head up against a brick wall. If something's not there, they've struggled all year long running the football. Just drop back and throw it. And I think uh, hopefully they'll they'll start to pick that up and start calling some more passive plays here. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that's a fullback saying that. Mark that down. <laughs> Mark that down. Third down and 12 for the Cougars. From their own 39-yard line. Robustall with a passing lane and another drop. This time, Daniel Blackledge can't hold on. And again, Jason touching on missed opportunities. Both teams and that's not what, taking advantage of plays that have been there. And I think that's probably been the case all year long. These guys have been in position to be able to make plays, and that would have been a, a huge play right there. It would have been, at least gave you a, a great opportunity to have a look at a, a, a fourth and short, but um, just not able to hang on to the football. Reed Forrest on the punt, 36-yard punt on his first time out. Devin Aguilar back to receive for the Huskies as that one takes a very good bounce for the Cougars. Not the prettiest of punts, but very effective for Washington State. As Jake Locker will bring his offense back out on the field. I think if you're the Huskies, so much of Steve Sarkeesian's pro-style offense is predicated off the play action. They've had a few successful running plays, but to this point, they haven't moved the pocket a whole lot, and pretty much everything they've thrown has been drop back. So I think you'll see Steve Sarkeesian now that they've probably gone on the script for their first 15 plays, probably work in a little bit of play action here along with a heavy dose of Chris Polt. Blocker 5 of 10 so far for 38 yards. A young man who has uh, certainly dealt with adversity during his Husky career. Wins and losses, certainly one element of that. The broken thumb last year in game number four, costing him the rest of his sophomore season. As we have a delay right now on the field, as we have uh, apparently an official down on the far sideline near midfield. Yeah, not exactly sure what happened to him, but. He doesn't seem to be moving. Looks like it may be a member of the chain gang who is currently down. Oh, he's up and moving around now. Well, you know, we've talked about um, injuries as this uh, Cougar defense comes back out on the field. They have been uh, decimated on that side of the football, and we'll see how they can respond against this Husky offense. Washington with the 3 0 lead here in the second. And we are still in a delay situation here at uh, Husky Stadium due to an injury suffered, we believe, by one of the members of the chain gang on the far sideline, the Husky sideline. As you take a look, members of the 
Husky offense getting ready to head back uh, out on the field. They will have the football first and 10 at the 15-yard line following a Cougar punt. You know, sometimes those guys on the sideline, boy, they need to be uh, paid hazard pay because they're holding those chains over there, especially when there's uh, a special teams play like a punt or a punt return, anything like that. Those guys get pushed out of bounds and they're running. They're trying to cover the, the football as hard and as fast as they can, and sometimes you don't get out of the way in time, and those guys get run over all the time, and that's, that's pretty common. So hopefully he'll be all right, and uh, he'll get up on his feet and get moving around. So we now see a stretcher being brought out to the uh, area where the individual is being cared for. 13-52 left in the second quarter, the 102nd Apple Cup. Washington State looking for its first ever three-game winning streak in this series, which may seem hard to believe because the Cougars have certainly gone through their phases when they were uh, the better of the two programs. So that, that is the goal today, and if they get that done today, they would also make it five wins in the last six Apple Cups. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable, and I'm sure that's probably on the mind of every single one of those players out there on that field, especially for the Washington State guys, knowing that they came into this game underdogs at 24-point underdogs. I'm sure that probably feels like a slap in the face to them. They felt like they're probably a better football team than that. And, uh, but they're, they're right in this football game. It's still anybody's game. It's early. And uh, they've had some opportunities. They hadn't necessarily capitalized on them, but hopefully they can make some plays later on in the game that can influence the outcome. Well, unfortunately, we have an ambulance now getting involved and coming out uh, on the field. So obviously a situation where there is a great deal of concern regarding work. Doing some heat. Putting the wheels to work. It first down out across the 25-yard line. Jason, a delay like that, one you're not anticipating, how can that impact the quarterback? Well, I think if any one team has momentum, it can certainly thwart that, but neither one of these teams has been getting out of their own way in the first quarter, so I think it basically just resets this ball game, allows them to start over, and you saw that first play coming out of there. We talked about Keith Sarkeesian implementing a little bit of play action to open things up, and that's exactly what it is on first down. 11-yard run by... Jake Locker before Andy Mattingly brought him down. First and ten for the Huskies. Locker, open target, Jermaine Curse at midfield. Perfect timing on that pass play. Terrence Hayward with the coverage and the tackle for the Cougars. Well, they finally hooked up on this one. I mean, he used to have Jake Locker stepping back, throwing a deep post route by Jermaine Curse and, and throwing it on time, right where he can catch it. I mean, he really liked that, and uh, that's going to... That, I'm sure you'll probably give them some momentum. 24-yard gain, second catch in this contest for Curse. It's Paul Homer, the fullback in motion. Play fake by Locker. Deep down the middle. Curse again, open. The catch, and a touchdown for Washington. Making five touchdowns over a three-game span for Jermaine Curse, who's become Jake Locker's favorite target. I'll tell you what, Jake Locker throws this ball absolutely perfect. Jermaine Curse stretching out to get it for a touchdown. I mean, they've been trying to hook up all the first quarter, and even the first play of the game, Jermaine Curse dropped it, but he makes up for it on a beautiful catch right there. 50-yard scoring play. Eric Folk with the point after a touchdown has not missed one this season. And the Huskies get a little bit of breathing room with 12.41 left in this opening half at Husky Stadium. Play fake by Locker. And just a nice comfort level in the pocket, Mac. That is. And I'll tell you what also helped to set that play up is at least the Huskies have somewhat of a, of a running attack. And so when you give that little fake to Polk right there, all that creates is just a little bit of indecision by the defense, and the play can be successful. Well, let's not forget, guys, the Cougars have been really hampered by injury in that secondary, so they've got some guys running around back there that uh, some of them are really aggressive against the run, and others are inexperienced. And when you have 
a play action and they're going downfield against him. Neither one of those are very good combinations. And credit a very experienced combination and Jake Locker and Jermaine Kearse were hooking up now two times in a row for that big score. And that was Terrence Hayward. Hayward beating on that play. He's a redshirt freshman out of Carson, California. But to magnify your point before the Oregon State game, still over a week ago, they had to take a wide receiver and convert him to one of the safety spots two days before that game. And he turned out near the 30-yard line. Uh, James Tardy. And Washington State will have the ball first down and 10. This is a big point of emphasis for the Cougars all season long. Sometimes they've done well with it, sometimes not so well. Their ability to respond to adverse situations. They're on the road at the Apple Cup. The Huskies just go downtown for the scores. You see Jake Locker unleash one downtown. Now can the Cougar offense respond in a hostile environment and stay on the field for more than three plays? As we took a look at our Polaris hardest working player of the game, special stuff from Jake Locker to that man, Jermaine Curse. Marshall Lobestall continues a quarterback for the Cougars. First down and 10, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Daniel Blackledge. Mason Foster coming with some pressure for that Husky defense. Well, that's always hard for a quarterback to be able to throw the football when you've got somebody right in your face. And those uh, out routes are, are timing routes. They have to be thrown in rhythm and on step. And uh, just couldn't quite step into it on that one. Robustall again looking to the Cougars' sideline to get the play. Makes the change at the line of scrimmage. It's out to the 35-yard line. Well, that, to me, was a successful run. I mean, he got about three or four yards out of that one. And uh, you can you can work with that. I think if they can continue to call plays, get Mitts involved in the game, that will get them in the, in the third and sixth, third and seven-yard situation, convertible third-down situations, they can have a little bit more success on offense. They're down at seven. Loberstall out of the shotgun. Blackledge in motion. Huskies bringing extra pressure. The job by Lobestall, though, as he has the completion to Jeffrey Solomon. And it will be a Cougar first down. Yeah, Jeffrey Solomon just ran a great route right here. Here you see he goes back to sort of giving them room. He makes the catch and then turns and gets a couple extra yards. Great, great job of just moving the chain. 12-yard gain on that play. Today's first and 10 marker is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino. Cougars at their own 46-yard line. on the play. It was James Tardy, the ball carrier. It was. He's changing some uh, pleasantries with Donald Butler. You've got to have that in a rivalry game. Oh, yeah. Par for the course. I mean, it would be a rivalry game if you didn't jaw a little bit. I mean, you got to sell some wolf tickets out there. Loss of two, second down and 12. Start pointing out something to the sideline. Play clock at 10 seconds. Overstall to throw. Open receiver. Jared Byers into Husky territory near the 48. Desmond Trufant with a stop. Jared Byers, an interesting story. He's a true freshman walk-on out of Pullman High School. There he is, number 37. So, in injuries, allowing him the opportunity to get some playing time, and they've been using that fullback role a little bit more recently. So, young man contributing there, a short game, now third down and four. He got him in a manageable third down situation. Inside of 10 minutes left in this opening half. Lobestall with time. Directing traffic and the incomplete pass. And Parstetter in the neighborhood. Looked like Blackledge was 
over there as well. But the Cougars unable to get it done on third down. And that has been a problem for this offense. Just 23% conversion rate on third down this season. That is last in the Pac-10. And that will bring on Reed Forrest to punt. Well, I bet if you looked at to what their third down and distance was with the average of the Pac-10, they're probably one of the worst teams there, too. You go third and long, more often than not, because you can't get a run game going, you're putting your quarterback at a huge disadvantage. Forrest feeling some heat. And that is another very good bounce for Reed Forrest on the punt once again. Not exactly ideal field position for Jake Locker. Didn't matter last time. He took care of 50 yards on one play to Jermaine Curse for six. College football on FSN is brought to you by Money Tree. Money Tree now offers online loans. Apply at MoneyTreeInc.com. That's MoneyTreeInc.com. By Papa Murphy's, handmade fresh home baked break. That's Papa Murphy's. By Tulalip Casino, the number one place to stay and play. And by Banner Bank. Better ideas, better banking. First down and 10 for the Huskies with a 10-0 lead as they operate from their own seven-yard line. Chris Polk up the middle. And a nice first down again on the ground for the redshirt freshman. Time now for our fan polls question. What do you think the most likely outcome of today's game is? You can text A, Huskies dominate and win easily. B, Huskies win close, hard, but game. Or C, the Cougars win. Text A, B or C to 95323. We'll keep you up to date on the voting. In fact, here are the latest numbers. Looks like the uh, Cougar fans have their texting going strong. Here on this Saturday night is once again Polk with a carry out near a Husky first down. Here's Polk with an opportunity tonight to not only to set a freshman rushing record, but to also become the first freshman to reach 1,000 yards in a season as a Husky. Yeah, and I think Washington State is uh, definitely trying their best to keep him from accomplishing that tonight. They, uh, every time he has the ball in his hand, he's getting hit at the line of scrimmage or just a few yards down the field. And he's known for breaking tackles, and he had broke, broken a lot of tackles so far today. Third down and one. And again, the extra effort after that initial contact should be pulled. And the Huskies, the first down. Travis Long in on the stop for the Cougars. And it is a Husky first down at the Washington 18-yard line. Talked about Chris Polk coming into this game. 889 yards, averaging five yards per carry, three touchdowns. A long run this year of 41 yards. And he's being put to work here in the second quarter. Good defense that time by the Cougars. Nice job that time by Mike Ledgerwood as he shot the gap and got to Polk. Mike Ledgerwood has made a couple plays on Polk today. He's definitely in tune to what's going on in the game plan. So obviously to stop this young freshman from doing a lot of damage on the ground. Nice containment by that Cougar defense. Chris Polk, 11 carries, 31 yards. As we look at uh, 7.15 left on the clock here in the second quarter at Husky Stadium. Locker locking in on his target that time, Jermaine Curson. Good coverage by Air Justin for Washington State. The 5'11 sophomore out of Van Nuys, California was right there with Jermaine. Yeah, everybody thought that Justin maybe was just a little too tight right there. But uh, I don't know. It looked like a clean call. Hey, what good, guys, a good no call. Yeah, I agree with you, Mac. And the Cougar defensive staff, Chris Ball, showing a lot of confidence in their young corner, Air Justin. Certainly one of the strengths of this Washington offense is their receiving core. Big, tall receiver like Jermaine Curse. He gets inside of that, and he goes to the house. But give credit to Justin. Great coverage. Third down and 12 for the Huskies. Harper feeling some heat, and he'll go down. Casey Hamlet taken down to Jake Locker. Nice play by number 96 for the Cougars. And the punt team will come on for the Huskies. You know, 
There's been a couple of times today where I feel like the Jake Locker has some opportunities to run the football. There's been gaping holes. Guys are running, trying to get to the quarterback, opening up large holes right in the middle of the defense. And he's standing in the pocket trying to throw it. But he might be able to make a little bit more uh, yardage, make a few more explosive plays if he would just tuck that thing and run it. Will Mayhan on to punt for the Huskies. Gino Simone to return for the Cougars. At his own 40-yard line, he just signals get out of the way. Not the best effort by Mahan, and good field position for the Cougars. They'll have the ball first and 10 at their own 44-yard line, and a terrific defensive stand by Washington State and number 96, Casey Hamlet. But the Huskies lead by 10. College football on FSN is brought to you by Widmer, Ordinary Brothers, Extraordinary Beer, by Lipitor, and by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. 10-0, the Washington Huskies leading the Washington State Cougars, 614 left in the opening half at Husky Stadium, the 102nd Apple Cup as you take a look. Total yardage being dominated by the dogs washington state with just four rushing yards so far in this game a little trickery here reverse jeffrey solomon to throw simone with the reception and a first down for the cougars in husky territory so the second trick play we've seen guys out of this washington state offense and we saw jeffrey solomon throw the football in game one of the season when the cougars were at home against stanford and he completed that pass well here you saw a well executed trick play right here i mean here you see solomon coming around and finding a wide open receiver right there in the hole that was great they've had two well executed plays the first one just was it uh, wasn't a reception Lobestall feeling some pressure from Court Dennison and loaded the football incomplete after that 17-yard gain on the trick play. Jeffrey Solomon, by the way, was a high school quarterback at Ingram High School, transferred to Washington State after his time at Eastern Washington. Well, and that play, guys, a great example of what a lack of a running game will do, a play-action fake that Court Dennison didn't even take a second look at. He went right at the quarterback and made... Lobestall get rid of that ball well before he wanted to. Play clock at 10. Second down and 10 for the Cougars. Foster putting some pressure on, nearly picked off, and the ball hitting the turf. Nearly coming up with that interception for the Huskies, Darian Jones. What? I'm sorry. Well, you see the tail end, of it, tail end of it right there with Jones just missing, getting a pick. But you know what? It's really making – Washington State is really making uh, an, an argument for Marshall Lobestall having to look over to the sideline every time to get a play. Because what that does is that takes away his ability to be able to read the coverage, look at the defense, and go through that thought process of his progression as far as who's going to throw the ball to. Third down and ten. Lobestall. And the play blown dead as we have a flag. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 78. Fire at Finley, third down. Jack Fall, you heard our referee. So for the Cougars, it goes from third and long to third and longer. 15 yards needed now for the first down. Jason Lobestall is, is a young guy who two games ago against UCLA picked off three times in the opening quarter. What does he need to do to regain some confidence after that terrible display? Well, I think he's got to have just a chance to develop a little bit of rhythm. I mean, they've been so inconsistent at quarterback. Guys in the lineup, guys out of the lineup. It's, these guys just need to be able to play for a full series, a full game without worrying about it. And that's some worry there in terms of pressure, but gets out of it. Makes something out of nothing. Nice job by Lobestall on the ground that time. He'll be short of the first down. And looks like he's shaken up a bit. Here's a, a, another example. As you take a look at this replay here, I mean, you ask, what does he need to do? They've got to be able to sit back there when any play is called, just have confidence that they're going to have the protection. And right now, 
this football team, whether it's a quarterback or the offensive line, there isn't that trust factor that, hey, I'm going to get my job done so that you can get your job done. And that creates all sorts of timing problems between quarterback and receiver. Took a pretty good look from Jason Wells on that play. And Lobestall shaking up. Of course, he's playing because Kevin Lapina, the starter, was knocked out of the ball game. At least up to this point, Jeff Toole would be the third string quarterback. A little helmet to helmet contact between Wells and Lobestall. Well, and you appreciate the effort by Lobestall, but when you know you've got a true freshman on the bench with a bum wing, or excuse me, a bum leg, and you've got an, your starting quarterback that's already out of the game, you probably got to take a slide there. Those defensive guys are just looking for opportunity to uh, impale a, a quarterback. And so I totally agree with you, Jason. He's got to find a way either to make that guy miss or just slide and realize that you've gotten all you're going to get on that play. The Apple Cup marks the final contest of the season for the Cougars. Jake Locker and the Huskies, though, will close out the 2009 season next Saturday against the 21st ranked California Golden Bears. Live coverage kicks off at 3 p.m. on FSN and FSN HD. Look at Husky defensive coordinator Nick Holt talking with uh, his guys. And for the most part, you know, the numbers don't knock your socks off. They're allowing 24 points per game, 7th in the conference, seventh in run defense, 30 in pass defense, total defense. So they've done a pretty good job uh, in the red zone, sort of that bend, but don't break. But uh, he's obviously looking for more improvement out of this group as this program solidifies in the years ahead. Fourth down and four, and the Cougars will go for it with 5.04 left in the first half. And it's Lapina back at quarterback. And Lapina will go down. Darian Jones, who was unable to haul in that pass for the interception, does come up with the sack. And the Huskies will take over on downs. Boy, and Darian Jones coming off a pretty nice performance at Oregon State a few weeks ago, albeit the loss. He had a nice game himself. Getting a sack, it's another sack here in the Apple Cup, and Darian Jones playing his last few games of his Husky career, certainly making the most of it. So a golden opportunity for the Husky offense with a 10-0 lead, 4.55 left in this opening half, and an opportunity to really extend the lead against the Cougars. Locker with plenty of time, and the catch, or an incompletion, ruled incomplete the intended target, Chris Isbicki. Back up tight end for the Huskies. Boy, well, guys, I, I'm just surprised Locker is just not sharp tonight at all with his accuracy. And that's one of the things coming into the season that this new coaching staff was going to fix. And so much of it is having your eyes and your feet in sync. And Jake kind of got caught in between steps there and just threw that ball into the ground. A lot of that is just fundamentals that as a pure athlete, Jake does fantastic things. But as a pure quarterback, I think at times he still shows he's got a long way to go. 7-14, no interceptions, one touchdown at 50 yards for Jake Locker. On second down, Hurst with a reception and the first down at the Cougar 45-yard line. Jason, to follow up on your point, you think Jake sometimes, naturally so, because of what he's trying to do differently this year, staying in the pocket more than abandoning the pass play and running. Do you think sometimes he gets caught by overthinking a little bit? Yeah, and I think that comes a lot, with Tom, and just only being in this system for a year. I mean, a lot of the things just become second nature, that offensive muscle memory in football. He just isn't there yet, and so those things aren't, the, the thoughts and the reads aren't coming off the top of his head as quickly as they would, and as a result, I don't think he's in as much rhythm or sync as he will be in future games. 14-yard pass play to Curse, who has four catches for 94 yards and a touchdown. Pump fake by Locker. Open receiver, Aguilar. Down to the 26-yard line, Air Justin with the coverage for the Cougars. And one thing you can't question is his arm strength. He, he, he puts a little bullet on this one, finds that seam between the backer and the corner, and puts it right on the number of Aguilar. Devin Aguilar is uh, an outstanding receiver out of Denver. Came into the ball game with 34 catches, 473 yards, and three touchdowns. That's his second catch tonight, a 20-yard gain. And a first down and 10 for the Huskies at the Cougar 26. Two receivers to Lockers left out of the gun. 
Andre Goodwin with the reception, but a loss of a couple of yards on that play. Myron Beck. Six foot two oh nine junior out of Ingram High School via Glendale College with the tackle for the Cougars. You know, guys, a lot of times you see those little quick screens set up with the ball in the middle of the field. That time that ball is on the right hash. And so for Jake to make that play pick up all the way across the field, it makes it like a 25-yard horizontal throw. And so it's, it's a long way for that screen to still be set up without the defense having a chance to react to it. And you saw the Cougars were all over it. Second down and 12. Both around back. After buying some time. And overthrows. Cavario Middleton. I don't think he really had any intent of trying to connect with Cavario. He was thinking more of it. Just get rid of this. Play not losing a yardage and try again on third down and 12. Well, he's just like any other quarterback that, you know, in college football or in the pros for that matter. You know, they have certain throws that they like more than others. Uh, Jake has been doing excellent as far as just strictly drop back passes. When he's on the move and he's on the run, he's using his legs to get outside the pocket, throwing on the run. He's not as accurate. So that's definitely something he's going to have to work on. But he's, uh, he's got that drop back pass thing going tonight. Third down and 12. And incomplete. Chimawachiku with the coverage on that play for Washington State. James Johnson was the intended receiver for the Huskies. And it'll be Eric Fulton to attempt a field goal of 46 yards. His long this season, 48. And he's connected three of five between 40 and 49 yards. Front 46. It's good. Eric Folk, the sophomore out of Woodland Hills, California, pushes the Husky lead out to 13 to nothing. Look at the crew getting ready. Damon Hewitt, Jason Gesser in the middle, Brad Adam, the Avatar halftime show coming your direction. Jason still smiling. His Cougars are down by 13, so he's uh, holding out some hope. <laughs> you know, one of the things that uh, Steve Sarkeesian said about his offense, though, that he would like for them to improve and that he wasn't happy with was their red zone efficiency. And there you saw them in the middle of the field. They moved down with uh, excellent precision. Jake Locker spread the football around, throwing it accurate on time, uh, making some great catches, but then they got down close to the red zone they start bogging down so that's the area they're gonna have to improve on you don't ever want to look down the road to the next game or anything like that but going into the next year that's going to have to be a point of emphasis for them Ben pulse update most likely outcome in this contest huskies win easily has moved ahead of cougars win you can still text a b or c to nine five three two three with the kickoff taken by Carl Winston and he's going nowhere stacked up shy of the 20 yard line Carl Winston freshman out of Harbor City California backup running back also involved on that kickoff return team we talked about the youth on both of these teams Carl Winston on a 13 freshman the Cougars have rolled out there this year and as frustrated as Washington State fans may have been over the course of this season with the lack of results and you throw that many kids out there you're bound to have some issues the exciting part is you talk with anybody on that Washington State staff and albeit they're not getting the short-term results they're as excited as heck about the long-term possibilities of these young kids they've got in the program the pain a little swing pass to Mitz and he can't hold on. Of course, the Huskies will tell you, hey, we got, we have 10 true freshmen we played this year, too. Well, that's the, you know, been so the, that's, there's, there's a lot of youth on both these teams. Yeah, that's been a – so, the, in the other words, the future looks bright for both of these teams. I mean, you look at them, even Paul Wolf said that the program looks good. Now, you, you say you're 1-10, what do you mean the program looks good? But it looks good for the future. They're playing all these guys, they get experience, and they're going to be able to draw back on this year, next year. And bring in next year a lot of the guys who were hurt this year and had their seasons cut short. Lapina with the pitch. Up in there, Latardi. He's gang tackled. 
First Husky there was Darian Jones, number 59, who's having a really strong second quarter of action. Yeah, he's making some great plays. It's really hard for me to imagine you're going to be successful running a kind of option like that into the short side of the field. Well, that you've got to believe. I mean, the option means you're either going to run or you're going to pitch it. You've got to believe <laughs> there's an option to run it. And with Lapina getting hit as much as he had in the first half, Nobody's going to believe that. And guys, this is an important third down coming up for Washington State. Washington with two timeouts. I believe they just used one to stop the clock there. If they can prevent the Cougars from getting the third down, they're going to get the football back in pretty good field position, and they can add to this 13-0 lead. So we'll see how aggressive Paul Wolf wants his offense to be. Well, here in lies, down. Sorry, Tom. Here in lies the problem is this Cougar offensive line is so maligned, you know the Huskies going to bring the heat, and this is where that trust between the quarterback and the O-line is broken down all year long. They don't believe they're going to have time to get the ball off, and oftentimes, instead of looking downfield, their eye is on the rush, and that, that is a bad recipe when you got third and long. Two wide receivers to each side for that man, number nine, Kevin Lapina, the Cougars. And the Huskies, three of eight so far with their third down conversions. Third and nine. Lapina flushed out of the pocket. Sliding for the first down at the 30-yard line. We talked about earlier his ability. Not that he's Jake Locker, but he can he can do a nice job when presented the opportunity to run the football. And uh, he learned from Marshall Lobestall, too. <laughs> don't slide. run, it, don't run into down. a headache. Slide. Well, let's not forget, Lapina's 242, so he's not a guy that anybody wants to necessarily get in front of if they don't have to. First down and 10. Taylor Nessheim putting some pressure on. Nearly picked off by Mason Foster is Cameron Elisara. Put another herd on the peanut. And Kevin may be forced to leave this game for a second time. He was hit and hit hard. I think he uh, he may have a it looked like he may have a concussion. It looked like the back of his head hit the ground. Well, and he's reaching for that lower back like he did that first time. I know it was reported he had that neck stinger, but watch him just get dropped right on him. That is a perfect form tackle by Cameron Ellis. And I've been in a few of those situations as a quarterback, and when the defender has your arms wrapped up and you can't move them to brace your fall, it is not a comfortable feeling. And unfortunately, sometimes it ends the way it did for Kevin Lapina, injured on the turf. Let's connect with Brad Adam, who is uh, with a couple of guys. Know a little something Chance about the quarterback hero. position. Brad? <laughs> That's right, Tom. They also know something about being on the bottom of the pile like Lapina just was. So, Lopestall out, Lapina out. Who's quarterbacking now for the Cougs? You know, you see Daniel Wagner over there taking some reps. He came in last year as a true walk-on freshman in a couple games sparingly. Uh, but he has some experience. He knows just enough of the offense. He's also a backup punter. Um, He's a walk-on guy that, that played really well and did really well in Jesuit. Do you know at this point if there's any Cougar uh, students in the stands who might be able to throw a football? <laughs> I might be able to guess four. I can warm yeah, up. Your eligibility's all gone, my friend. But seriously, are there anybody in the stands or what? Um, I don't know. That's a, true, <laughs> that's a great question, you know. Let me ask you, Damon, on UW's side, the defense, yeah. does it come after this walk-on with everything it's got these next couple of plays? Absolutely. You know, that's why it's so important to save your timeouts. The Cougars blew their timeouts early there in the first quarter, couldn't figure out the play, couldn't get things squared away. We have our timeouts here at the end of the half, have an opportunity to stuff them and hopefully get it into score before halftime. It looked like somewhat of a promising drive for the Cougs. They might have gone down to kick maybe a field yep. goal or something, get in with some positive momentum in the halftime. Can they still get it done with this guy quarterback? No, right now, I mean, after you got that first down run by, by Lopina, you, you go and you run the football and you get out. You know, you, you get out of the half, you, your defense is playing great right now. They're stopping them on, on numerous occasions. Get out, get your guys safe, go into halftime, reevaluate everything, and get out of the half. Because hey, you go and you run the football here, they're not going to take more timeouts. They're, they're just not. So You see Lapina there getting getting up very gingerly, getting helped off the field. It's, it's hard kind of to say. It looks like a, a knee or an ankle or some type of a leg injury for Lapina. Second time he's been knocked out of this game, and he certainly hates to go out. The senior hates to go out like this with an injury. Anytime, trust me, anytime you uh, get hurt your senior year and you gotta leave the game, it, it sucks. It's not it's not something fun you, you look forward to or anything like that. It's just part of the football game and part of the situation of you know life. So, so Damon, how about if you're the walk-on third string going into today's game, not expecting to play? Now here you are. You might have to play the entire second half. 
Well, I know he's a little nervous, but what a thrill for this guy. What a thrill and what an opportunity to make a name for himself, to make history on the biggest stage in Washington, the Apple Cup. So here he has this opportunity. It's still a tight game. You know, it's uh, it's close enough to where he's going to have a chance. But, boy, this Husky defense looks good today, and I think he's going to struggle. Look good in the home white pants for the first time under two minutes to play. We'll be back here with the Avatar Halftime Show right here outside the stadium. Let's go back inside to Tom and Matt. All right, guys, second down and 10 as Dan Wagner now directs this Cougar offense. Light tardy out near the 37-yard line. That'll bring up third down. And to see if the Huskies decide to take a timeout here. They'll let the clock roll as it ticks away. 137 left in this first half. Dan Wagner, 6'2", 10 sophomore out of Jesuit High School in Portland. Third down and three for the Cougars. Very difficult circumstance, certainly, for Wagner to come onto the field as you look at him. It's got to be hard looking over to that sideline, trying to wait to get the play. Play clock at six seconds. And the handoff to Tardy. He's bringing out the play, but Tardy does a nice job putting his head down and picking up the first down, and that should allow the Cougars to at the very least maintain possession and not give Washington another opportunity to get its hands on the football here in the first half. Well, well this drive is a win for the Cougars so far. They've been able to run the ball more effectively with Tardy back there, just handing the ball off to him, pull both both uh, the guard and the tackle around, get somebody in front of them, just make it soft for the big tailback. Well, you guys, I think also when you see both your first and second string quarterbacks go out from taking hits, you got to take a little onus on yourself through the offensive line and start getting after it a little bit. And I think you certainly see a little fire lit under all these guys those last two runs. Tardy again on the ground, cutting it back. Nicely done inside Husky territory at the 47-yard line. First down, a gain of 11 yards. That'll stop the clock. Now it's going to be interesting with this field position to see if Paul Wolf has enough confidence in Wagner, Jason, to give him an opportunity to put the football in the air. Yeah, well, he's going to have, have to have a lot of confidence because right now you're just trying to do damage control, I think. But what the Cougars have done in that run game is put that put that circumstance in his mind. And off to Tardy. And Nothing on that play. Yeah, I think you're going to go to the locker room and just try and stop the gaps and not cause any further damage and hope you can come out with a healthy quarterback in the second half. And that was the final play in the first half. And Paul Wolf and Todd Sturdy, the offensive coordinator, they've got some brainstorming to do at halftime with Dan Wagner at quarterback. We'll see if there might be a chance for Lobestall to come back. It certainly looked like Lapina's evening was over well 13 nothing at half huskies in front of the cougars we hand it off to brad adam brad well tom thank you very much i'm gonna hand it off to these former quarterbacks first you jason gesser your initial thoughts on the first half first Quickly. half first half defense playing great they gave up two big plays that's it you know washington state has done a great job uh, up front UW is controlling the line up front. David? Yeah, we're, uh, I think, getting control of this game right now. We struggled a little bit early. We had the penalties, the drop balls, but I think we found our ground. And I think going forward here, you know, they got their third string quarterback in. Bring the pressure, bring the hammer, and we should win. Well, only one touchdown in the first half. Locker to Curse covered 50 yards. UW up 13 to nothing. We're back with the Avatar Halftime Report. We'll hear from both coaches and have highlights of the first half. The <laughs> right. Well, you like the way that they ended that first half because they started to generate some momentum in that running game. Got a couple first downs. And uh, let's see if they can start off the second half the same way that they ended it. And we are underway in the second half. And it will be Cougar football. And it does appear as though Marshall Lobestall will bring the Cougar offense out onto the field with a first down and 10 at the 25-yard line as you look at Dan Wagner. Well, guys, and regardless who starts a quarterback for the Cougars this second half, it's going to be on the offensive line to provide protection for anybody back there, allow them to trust the play, set up the time for the play so they can convert. And remember, Lobestar was shaken up at helmet-to-helmet contact in the first half, handing off the ball to James Tardy. And Tardy out across the 30-yard line. Excuse me, Dwight Tardy with the carry. Well, that's the good start to the second half. That's what you want to see. Hand the ball off to the running back. Let him make some yards. 
take the pressure off the quarterback, especially now having to drop back with a shaky offensive line and to be able to try to make some plays in the second half. Dwight Tardy with eight carries, 26 yards, the leading rusher for the Cougars here tonight. And again, if you're just joining us and you're wondering what is going on offensively with Lobestall looking to the sideline, this, this is how the Cougars do it. He'll look over to the sideline, get the play, and the execution, another handoff to Dwight Tardy. And that'll bring up third and short for the Cougars. Well, you see Dwight Tardy, I mean, just banging it up there and getting a couple of good hard yards. But one of the things that Paul Wolf said that he wanted to, for the, in order for this offense to develop some consistency is there has to be that trust, in, trust factor in place. He has to trust that his offensive linemen are going to block the guys that they need to up front, and he'll be able to step into his throws and deliver the football. You see the backup quarterbacks along with offensive coordinator Todd Sturdy grouped together on the sideline on third down and three. Lobestar nearly picked off Adam Long with terrific coverage and that throw to the sideline. I referred earlier to Lobestall's nightmarish performance a couple of weeks ago against UCLA. It was the throws to the sideline that those corners were able to break on and come up with interceptions and the Cougars dodging a bullet right there. We yeah. see Todd Sturdy talking to Lobestall on the sideline. That out route right there is so much based on timing. Lobestall started on the opposite side of the field. By the time he came back, the receiver was well out of his break already. And that gave Long a chance to break on the route and be in position for an interception. And Aguilar fielding the punt from Reed Forrest. Good punt for the Cougars as Huskies will take over. After a modest return by number nine, Jake Locker heads out for his first possession here in the second half. Jake, 10 of 19 in the first half, 144 yards and a touchdown. That's a 50-yard connection to Jermaine Curse. So the Huskies will have it at first down and 10 at their own 25-yard line, looking to really put a hurt on this Cooter football team if they can add to a 13-0 lead. Two wide receivers to the right for Locker. Oh. With room and out near a first down at the 35-yard line. Well, that's one thing the Cougars don't want to see. Is they won't want to see a healthy dose of Chris Polk this second half. Let me tell you something, because this guy, once he gets going north and south, he's hard to bring down. There you see him just dragging a guy for about another two yards to get the first down. Xavier Hicks Jr. with the stop for the Cougars, but not before a new set of downs for the Huskies. Slaughter will operate out of the shotgun on first and 10 from his own 35. Over the middle, Cavario Middleton with the reception. Mike Ledgerwood with the tackle. Cavario Middleton with his first catch in the game. And, of course, on Monday, he made a little bit of news <laughs> regarding the Apple Cup. He was asked by a local reporter what he thought of the point spread of about 24 and a half points. And he said, I don't know much about that. Our plan, though, is to score 50. <laughs> so that, that added a little fuel to the fire. And the Huskies certainly have a ways to go to get to that 50-point plan that he was talking about. Locker with room. Still in bounds. Actually called out at the 41-yard line. Well, here you can see that Washington and Washington State went in in the second half and tried to make halftime adjustments. And they probably saw something in the first half where they could get Jake Locker out on the corner, play fake, just freeze the defense for a second, let him get out on the corner, use his speed. Great first down right there. If he had to step out of bounds, it would have been interesting to see if he would have been able to take it to distance. Number 43, Alex Hoffman Ellis just getting enough contact on Locker to get him maybe out of bounds by about a half inch, but it was a huge half inch. The Huskies now operate first down and 10 at the Cougar 41. Two carries for Jake Locker, 28 yards. That one a 16-yard run. Pitch by Polk out of the backfield. 
gain of two on first down. Guys, on that previous run by Jake Locker down the sideline, we talked about all the great things the defensive end Travis Long has done for the Cougars in his true freshman year. That time, they picked on him a little bit and did a little zone read. He's just reading Long. If he crashes down, he keeps it. If he stays a locker, he doesn't. Long crash down and turn into a big play for the dogs. Today's first and ten marker is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino. Second down and eight. Locker with two receivers to his right. Aguilar and Curse. The handoff to Paul. And nothing there. Defensive penetration by that Cougar defense. You look at Andy Mattingly, number 45 right there. Also, Hoffman Ellis. Ledger Wood has had a very productive night. Eight tackles in the first half for backup linebacker out of Kennewick, number 44. Well, they dropped the safety down in the box to help support with the running game against the run. So if, if Washington can see that and they can make an adjustment at the line of scrimmage, they could probably hit it for a big pass having a single safety in the middle. Third down and seven. some movement on the offensive line for the Huskies. False start on the offense, number three, five-yard penalty. James Johnson, the true freshman wide receiver, flagged for the penalty. Boy, that's the kind of stuff that will just <laughs> drive a coach up the wall. The receiver's got no reason to jump on anything. They're just watching the ball, and the ball clearly didn't move, and James Johnson did, and that is the kind of thing that Losing teams do that get in their own way on third down situations and they put themselves in even a bigger hole. Third and 12. Locker on the draw. And some good room, but he's going to come up short of the first down. Like Ledgerwood was in on the stop again for Washington State. And Steve Sarkeesian immediately says, Stay on the field. I got a play for you. Well, this is how big that last penalty uh, was. They were they had a, a makeable third down situations. They backed the ball up four yards, uh, five yards. Jake Locker, they call a quarterback draw. He ends up missing it by like three yards. Fourth down and two. The Huskies this season have converted six of 11 fourth down tries. 55%. It's fourth best in the Pac-10 conference. And a timeout taken by Steve Sarkeesian. So nine minutes left here in the third quarter of the 102nd Apple Cup. The Huskies looking to add to their 13 to nothing lead. Some happy Husky fans with their team leading the Cougars 13 to nothing. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. And Jake Locker and company looking at a fourth down and two from the Washington State 33 yard line. That's Curse in motion. Locker with a play fake. Rolls out an open target. And the ball is caught by the fullback, Paul Homer. And the drive will stay alive for the Huskies. Give the fullback a bone. That's what I like. That's what I like to see. Sneak that full back out of the out of the flats. Typically, he's all alone. He's uncovered. People don't necessarily think about him sneaking out there and being wide open for uh, easy first down catch. Paul Homer came into this game without a reception this season, and he has three. You know what he's thinking? I've been here all year. That's right. <laughs> Well, they didn't make that look easy, though. Two yards was, you had to work hard for that. I'm not going to blame it on the fullback, though, Mac. <laughs> Don't do that. Locker to Goodwin. DeAndre Goodwin with a nice pickup and a flag on the play. This one may go against the Huskies for an illegal block. Andy Mattingly with the stop for Washington State. See, that's what happens. You get those fullbacks out in space too much, Mac. They get called for a holding penalty. <laughs> All the more reason why you need to get those guys out there and be more familiar with it. Don't wait <laughs> till the <laughs> Apple Cup the to play them out 30. there more. Ten yard penalty spot on the foul. First down. All right, it was a hold <laughs> against Paul Homer. We'll take a second look at this. Come on, Paul. <laughs> Make a play. Oh, you got to let go right there. You know, never a good idea, especially a bad idea when you're about three feet from the official. <laughs> no, you can't get your hands on the outside of a guy. You got to get him on the inside. That way, uh, 
The referee can't see that. Well, he's used to blocking guys that have a whole lot more inside to grab. That air <laughs> Justin is all about 160 dripping wet. So first down and 15 now for the Huskies. I formation. Play fake. Rock with a lot of time. Wide open. It's Homer. His new favorite target in the fullback. Down near the 22-yard line. So, Jason, talk about this. Again, here's Paul Homer. No catches coming into this game. Now he has four. Obviously, this has been game plan specifically because of something Steve Sarkeesian saw on that Cougar defense. Well, I think one of the things the Cougars do because of personnel, they play a real loose covered zone, which leaves a lot of underneath stuff. And certainly within a game, you'll game plan certain plays. You're not trying to get a ball to anybody necessarily, but... You take what the defense gives you, and Jake's doing a good job of finding number 30 here tonight. An 11-yard gain, second down and four. Polk, on a room, first down and more for Chris Polk, down near the 12-yard line. One of his better runs in this Apple Cup. The Huskies are threatening deep in red zone territory. So your Paul Homer is just getting it done here in the second half. Here you see him sealing the defense, making it very easy for Polk to get outside and get that first down. Huskies this season in the red zone. 33 trips, they've scored 28 times. That's a combination of touchdowns and field goals. They've scored 16 TDs. It's 48% clip. Let's get a good look at Mike Ledgerwood. Number 44 for the Cougars. First down and 10, Washington at the 12. Locker with Rose. Jake Locker. Down near the two-yard line, maybe the one. Jake Locker using that speed from the quarterback position. Well, he's just so dangerous. I mean, they've been kind of holding him in check. I think he's been holding himself in check in the first half, not running the football, keeping his eyes down the field, looking for an open guy. And now they just told him the second half, hey, if you see something, you go get it. Well, I'm right down here on that goal line, fellas. He almost lost that ball as he had that collision with two Cougar defenders. Lucky for the Huskies, he was able to hold on to that as they're now first and goal just inside the two. 11-yard gain for Locker. First down and goal for the Huskies. Oh, touchdown. Chris Polk with the second touchdown for the Huskies, and now a 19 to nothing lead over the Cougars. Well, you talk about setting a tone at the beginning of the half, the first half and the beginning of the second half. Here you just see those uh, Washington Huskies getting movement at the line of scrimmage, giving Polk just a little bit of daylight so that he can get over the top and get in the end zone. Eric Folk with a point after a touchdown and a 20 and nothing Husky lead over the Cougars. Jake Locker and company trying to turn this into a blowout. Avatar at James Cameron Movie Event showcases the Apple Cup on FSN. Avatar in theaters December 18th. Welcome back to Husky Stadium in Seattle, the 102nd Apple Cup. And the Washington Huskies in front of the Washington State Cougar, Cougars, 20 to nothing. As you look at Chris Polk, who scored that last TD from a yard out for the Huskies. And he'll get right on the bike and stay loose for the next offensive possession for Washington as Eric Folk kicks off. Oh, Winston with the ball at the 10-yard line for the Cougars on the return. Straightened up at about the 23-yard line. Nice tackle that time for the Huskies. Let's take a look at our Avatar game recap. Trick play early in this contest. Gino Simone unable to hold on. It cost the Cougars six points. Mason Foster, nice read on that play. Jake Locker, the first touchdown of the game, 50 yards to Jermaine Curse in the second quarter. And oh, it has been a rough night for Kevin Lapina. Knocked out of this football game on two occasions. And just moments ago, Chris Polk extending the Husky lead to 20 to nothing. Marshall Lobestall trying to get something going for a Cougar offense that has been stymied tonight. Lobestall out to Simone. 
Court Dennison will haul him down after a gain of about four or five yards. To get something going, they need to do this second half, Tom. Make no mistake about it. I think in order for them to make this game competitive at this point, they need to go down and get some points out of this. Whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, it really doesn't matter. They need to sustain the drive, put it together, get down, get points out of it. Five-yard gain on that play, second down and five. Ten for Lobestall. Hand off. Dwight Tardy. Not much there. Nice tackle by Donald Butler, the middle linebacker. That's really the strength of that Husky defense, Mac. Those linebackers. Foster, Butler, EJ Savannah before he got hurt, before Dennison has done a nice job filling in for him. That's the thing that I think really makes this defense go, is that they all can run. And uh, at linebacker, at linebacker position. Foster's for his five fumbles this season. That's tops in the conference. Third down and four for the Cougars. Husky fans pumping up the volume here on third down. Lobestall in trouble, and he'll go down. Court Dennison with the sack. That's what we're talking about, those young linebackers. He will see Court Dennison get in there and for a big sack. Second sack of the season by Court Dennison. Jason, very difficult. It's going to be now the rest of the way, I would think, for Lobestall. They've got to turn away from the run, go more to the pass, and that Husky defense just getting those starting blocks and go. Yeah, they know they're going to be throwing the football, and as a quarterback, you get to that situation where you get hit a lot, and all of a sudden you feel that pressure even sooner than maybe it's getting there. So your breeds are getting made a lot faster. You're not getting rid of the football, and you see what the end result is, either a sack or sometimes a bad throw. Marshall Lobestall feeling the heat from Port Dennison. There's certainly more heat coming his way with his team down 20. Three forty-six left in the third quarter in the Apple Cup Husky Stadium in Seattle, and the Huskies with a commanding 20 to nothing lead. As Jake Locker and the offense for Washington taking over. At its own 37-yard line. Locker with a lot of time in the pocket. Wide open receiver at midfield. Devin Aguilar down to the Cougar 42-yard line. And with all that time, those Cougar defensive backs could not hang with Devin Aguilar. No, he had a lot of time sitting in the pocket. I'm sure Marshall Lobestall was wishing he was on the other side, wishing he had that kind of time to find open receivers. But there you see Devin, Devin Aguilar just sitting in that hole right there and uh, waiting for the uh, ball to get there. Made some good things happen. Now linebacker Myron Beck just simply lost Aguilar, a 21-yard gain for the Huskies in a first down. Locker picked off. But Xavier Hicks Jr. with the interception, still on his feet at the 40. And finally brought down around the 41-yard line. Xavier Hicks Jr. with the interception. Junior out of Fullerton High School in California. I'll tell you what, Tom, that's one of the hardest throws to throw as for a quarterback. Maybe Jason can speak to that a little bit more than I can, but trying to throw over a guy in the hole when you got a, a, a deep defender and you have a shallow defender trying to squeeze the ball in between them and get a little bit of air under there, that's very hard to do. Well, in my estimation, watching that play, I think Jake made his pre-snap read. He never came off of it. Saw what he thought at the line of scrimmage was the coverage was going to allow that route. Then he just stared her down the entire way. And with Xavier Hicks, you've been back there for the last three years. You know, you, all you got to do is read the quarterback's eyes, and you got to put that one on Jake. Reverse here for the Cougars. Daniel Blackledge forced out of bounds after a short game. Now you see Foster using his speed to run that play down from the back. But, boy, I tell you what, when you throw interceptions, this is what happened to you. You got to keep your head on the swivel out there, Tom, especially if you're the quarterback. Because everybody's going to take a shot at you when they can. And that was Casey Hamlet delivering the blow against Jake Locker. Four-yard gain on that last play for the Cougars. Trying to generate some offensive momentum in the wake of that interception. 
by Tardy. Nice cutback move. Tardy at midfield. Leaps over one of his own players and is down at the Husky 45-yard line. Boys, you got to get the feeling that that interception gave the, the Cougar offense a little bit of life. These guys have been playing a lot more inspired in these last two plays, especially running the football, which is something they haven't done well up until this point. Jerry Karstetter making a nice human hurdle for Tardy to deal with right there. Tardy couldn't believe he was that wide open <laughs> in the second. Bounce and breathing room. They are now up to as a team 59 yards rushing on 23 carries. Tardy 11 carries for 40 yards. Play fake. Robustar in trouble. Drilled. Remember, he's been knocked out of this game already. As uh, Nate Williams came up from his strong safety spot. A little bit of a hurt on Marshall Lobestar. Well, you see this. I mean, Marshall Lobestar is forced to throw across his body. They bring a little safety blitz. It's a pressure that they have not seen yet tonight. Lobestar caught off guard by it and saw it just in time, ready to get rid of that ball so as not to take the big loss. Second down and 10 at the Husky 44. Receivers to the left for Lobestall. Out to Tardy with room. Down to the 37 yard line before Mason Foster makes the stop. Good job of just taking what the defense gives you on that one. Don't try to force anything, especially for Lobestall. Get the ball out of your hands as quick as you can. Get into a guy, get the ball in the guy's hands who knows what to do with it. Seven yard pickup on the play, third down and three, and the Cougars. Looking to make this a two-possession game if they can punch this ball into the end zone. They've got some more work to do. Husky Stadium starting to vibrate. Robustall. Terrific pass and just a flat-out drop by Jeffrey Solomon. So here's the question now for Paul Wolf. I don't think you there's any question it. to it. I think you go for it at this juncture in the game. You got 131 left in the third quarter. They're down by 20 points. I think to get anything going, make any kind of a spark for their team, they've got to go for it. Fourth down and three. Solomon to the left. Karstetter and Simone to Lobestall's right. Open target, Byers, the fullback, could not hold on. So back-to-back -back drops, and that kills that Cougar drive. Well, the Huskies end up winning this thing by a large margin. The, the Cougars are not, not going to have anybody to blame but themselves because they've had a lot of opportunities in this football game to make plays, and they didn't capitalize on them. They've had a lot of balls. They've dropped, ended up on the ground, trick plays that they missed for a touchdown. These are things that they're going to have to correct if they want to be a good football team. 125 left in the third quarter. The Huskies take over at their own 37-yard line. First and 10. There's curse in motion. Oh. With room. And again, Chris Polk, after contact, is really at his most dangerous because it keeps those legs churning. Well, you, you understand why he's averaging five yards a carry in the, in the Pac-10 conference. I mean, that's that's unbelievable considering that he's just a freshman, too. And uh, he's, he's a very hard runner. He knows how to keep his legs moving and to uh, give him, give the defender the smallest part of his body to hit. Nine-yard gain before Eric Justin made the stop. Second down. Hole for the first down. Last look at the scoreboard. They had his fifth down. I did not realize there was one available. <laughs> but you know, it's the Apple Cup. All bets are off. Anything can happen. It's like the 19th cup. hole. That's, that comes a little bit later. <laughs> I see. All right. Polk now at uh, 17 carries for 67 yards. And again, tonight he has an opportunity with 98 yards. He would have been a freshman rushing record of 987 yards. Flag on the play. This one will likely come back. 
That freshman rushing record held by Jake Locker <laughs> of 986 yards and uh, Polk needing 111 yards tonight to get to 1,000. Holding on the offense number 56. The 10 yard penalty is from the previous spot. First down. Senio Calamete, the starting uh, right guard. Look at Polk, 44 yards now away from becoming the first UW freshman to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. And this is a young man, Steve Sarkeesian, said, we didn't know what we had. You know, he was hurt last year. We come in. Is he a guy that could be our go-to guy, or are we going to have to use a number of backs? And it didn't take long for Chris Polk to let that coaching staff know he could be the man. That's, that's a guy that knows something about that role. Jake Locker. <laughs> Down to the Cougar 40-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. What? Take a look at Jake Locker. Little pump fake. Nobody open. That's and nice. I mean, you want to talk about being able to stay in the pocket and throw the football when you can. But I tell you what, he's dangerous when he tucks it and he runs with it. 15 minutes left at least in the Apple Cup and the Huskies with a commanding 20 to nothing lead. You know, it may be a bad hair day, but it's a good football day if you're a Husky fan so far. A 20 to nothing lead. Start the fourth quarter as Chris Polk picks up the first down and more. Huskies with a 20 to nothing lead. Well, I think we're going to see a steady diet of Chris Polk in this, this fourth quarter here. Try and run as much time off that clock as we can. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, you're seeing uh, kind of the war of attrition here a little bit. The first quarter, second quarter, he wasn't getting very many yards. Here in the third, fourth quarter, he's starting to get him in bunches now. Seven-yard carry before he was brought down by Andy Mattingly. First down and 10 at the Cougar 34-yard line. Locker with a play fake. And a lot of room to run. At the 25, cuts it back in and knocked down and knocked forward down to the 22-yard line. Well, the thing you love about that kid watching him run the football is he's always trying to find a way to get more yards. He's not running out of bounds. He's not just going to slide. He's going to find a way to get extra yards. Look at him cutting back into the middle of the field. And there's Casey Hamlet again on top of Jake Locker. And while we're talking about him, what a difference a year makes. Last year at this time, Casey Hamlet is a member of the Western Washington University football team. And the crooks up there ended that program. And Casey Hamlin now has been playing with this Cougar football team all year long and starting most of the year, playing, doing an excellent job. Jake Locker with a handoff to Polk, flag on the play. By the way, with that last scramble of 12 yards, Jake Locker became a Huskies leading rusher tonight. Seven carries for 79 yards. Uh, for those of you that do not know, Mr. Stiles is a former quarterback <laughs> at Washington State University. Right. And uh, certainly... There were two fouls on the play, holding on the offense, number 71. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 26. Both penalties offset, replay. I think I said Jason at Washington State, Western Washington right. University, and uh, they eliminated their football program uh, about a year ago. Jason's got some strong feelings about that. He does. <laughs> Casey Hamlet, though, has landed on his feet and, and uh, out of Edmonds Woodway High School and they went to play for the Vikings and the young man uh, well, some calls were made and he's made the most of his opportunity in Pullman. He sure, and he's done a great job stepping right in. I think it speaks a lot to that level of football and, and to the, the willingness of Casey Hamlet to take a challenge on and, and meet it head on. He's done a heck of a job. First down and 10 after the offsetting penalties and Jake Locker tripped up and that'll be a loss on that play. Check out our uh, fan pulse. Who is the star of this Apple Cup game so far? A, Jake Locker, B, Jermaine Curse, C, the Husky defense. You can text A, B, or C to 95323 and get you some early results in that polling here shortly. Second down and 15. I think all those guys have made a great case for themselves tonight. The defense has done an outstanding job. They're pitching the shutout so far. Polk alone in the backfield. 
Big hole. He may take it to the house. Down to the five-yard line. Chris Polk. Ripped up by the last defender who had a shot at him. Might, have put, might need to put Polk on that, that list. I don't think he feels very good about being left out of that one. There you see a, a huge block there by Ben Osai. Knocking down two people. Chris Polk hitting it right at the same time that Osai makes contact with the defender. Down inside the, inside the six-yard line. 21-yard gain, 19 carries, 95 yards for Chris Polk. He's on the verge of eclipsing the freshman rushing record held by the guy running the football right now, Jake Locker. With some room, Jake Locker, touchdown, Washington, but a flag on the play. It's going to be a block in the back, guys. That defender turned in to make a play on Jake Locker, and that receiver, trying all he had to do was just get in his way, but he put his hands on him. Wouldn't be surprised if that was a call. Holding on the offense number one. Senior Fenley from the call the foul. Repeat first down. So this one comes back. That is a very, very common mistake. I think it's a common mistake made by receivers, guys on the outside trying to make those blocks. When those guys turn their backs, you got to put your hands up and let them go. Just stay in the way. And also, as a runner, when you're running the football, you got to understand that you got to understand that the more you keep bouncing the play outside, the harder it's going to be for those guys to block the defender legally. Well, Jake Locker, currently voted the star of this Apple Cup. 50% of the vote. Husky defense with 42%. And still vote at 9-5-2-3-2. First down. Both looking for some room and gets inside the 10. Before he runs into a number of Cougar defenders. The ball came out, but it may have been blown dead before that. You know, to their credit, the Cougars have been played very, very well down here when the ball's gotten in the red zone. They've held the Huskies one time, one trip to a field goal. And I know they've given up some plays, but this defense has been out here on the field for a long time, and they're they're playing extremely hard right now. And, Mac, you mentioned it earlier, the Huskies trying to be more efficient down here in the red zone. Sark said earlier this week, so you know, we've called a lot of plays, but for a certain look, and when we didn't get that look, that play wasn't as good for that other coverage. We need to find plays that work well against all coverages down in that red zone so it doesn't set us back. Locker with time. And threw behind the intended receiver, Aguilar, at the five-yard line. And that'll bring up third and goal. You know, guys, that's another example right there of his uh, evolution in this offense and Jake Locker. Is this is a play tip guy. I think he probably would have turned up and run and tried to break that through that arm tackle, whereas that time he's a little indecisive, thought he was going to run, thought he was going to throw to Devin Aguilar, and ended up throwing a little bit behind him as he was being indecisive. Well, I, get, I think, again, that just kind of speaks to He probably needs a, another good year in his offense to really develop into that quarterback that will be able to play at a high level on Sunday. Out of the shotgun. Incomplete at the three-yard line again, trying to get the ball to Aguilar. And good defense there by, it looked like number 81 for the Cougars. And you're thinking 81, defensive secondary, that's Easton Johnson. We talked about him just two days before the Oregon State game. And that was last week's game for Washington State. He was converted from a wide receiver spot to the secondary due to injuries and ended up leading the Cougars in tackles in that game. You know, that just speaks a lot to that young man's ability as an athlete to be able to play, to switch gears from playing receiver to play DB. I've, I've known only maybe a handful of guys, Champ Bailey being one guy to be able to accomplish that and do it well. Eric Folk with a 27-yard field goal, 23 to nothing. Huskies over the Cougars. When we come back, we'll talk with those folks, Grandma and Grandpa Locker. We've got a youngster on both teams. Welcome back to the Apple Cup here on FSN. I am Angie Mentink, and Apple Cup week is very difficult for a lot of people uh, because sometimes you have split families, and I'm here with one of those families. I'm here with Grandma and Grandpa Locker, Grandma and Grandpa of Jake Locker of the Huskies, and 
Casey Locker of the Cougars. So, uh, Grandma or Barb, tell me how you combat, uh, you know, rooting for both sides. Well, I have to. When you're a grandma, you have to be very fair. And so Casey's not playing, but he's on the field. So we have to have Cougar, and then we have Husky. And it's my understanding a friend of yours made that scarf for you? Joan Beller, a good friend, yes, made it for me, and I just really like it. <laughs> All right, so you have a W on one cheek and a Go Cougs on the other. And uh, Grandpa, if we can ask you real quick, I know you guys had Thanksgiving, so was there lots of uh, fights over mashed potatoes with all those Huskies and the Cougars in the same house? Well, they don't. They didn't fight over it. We had, Casey came home from Washington State. Brady, his brother, older brother from Western Oregon, and then uh, Jake came up on Thanksgiving morning, and it was uh, it was fun having them all there. We had ten of our twelve at our Thanksgiving, and it was fun. Grandpa, thank you very much. We appreciate it, Hugh. And uh, guys, there is a tailgate afterwards where both the Huskies and the Cougars, the whole entire Locker family, will be together. All right, Angie, thanks so much. We have an injured Cougar on the play after that kickoff return, and I've not been able to pick up his number. But a big hit delivered on the returner, Carl Winston, by Nate Fellner. Winston, number 32. There's the hit by Fellner. The player... Though to the left, could not pick up his uh, number on that shot on the ground. Nate Fellner, by the way, the grandson of former Cougar football coach Jim Sweeney. Well, I'll tell you what, he got through and made a big-time hit on that, but that young man that's still laying on the ground out there, he was the outside of the wedge, and I think he took the brunt of that lick being, on the, being in the wedge. Sometimes that's where your biggest collisions come. And uh, he seems to be moving. All right. Well, well, they tend to the injured player. We'll take a timeout. 10:58 left in the fourth quarter. It's all Huskies, 23 to nothing. Ten fifty-eight left in the fourth quarter. The Huskies leading the Cougars, twenty-three to nothing, in the one hundred and second. Apple Cup. Zach Tadman was the injured Cougar who is now on the sideline. A backup tight end as you look at Zach number 83. And may have uh, been dinged a bit. A little wobbly as he came uh, off the field. And it appears as though the Cougar trainers are just kind of testing him right now. Marshall Lobestall getting some pressure. He's hit hard. Intended receiver Gino Simone unable to haul it in. At the 43-yard line is Nate Williams came flying in and applied some heat to Lobestall. Tell you what, I know it's cold tonight, but I think Marshall Lobestall is going to have to need it. He's going to need to get an ice tub tonight or sometime in the morning because he's taken a lot of pounding tonight and been on his back a lot. And if you missed it earlier, the starter at quarterback, Kevin Lapina, was knocked out of this ball game twice and has been unable to return after that second injury which apparently was to his right leg second down and ten for the Cougars tardy that play getting strung out nicely by Mason Foster no gain on that play you know, at some point you got to realize that against these quick linebackers of the University of Washington, you're not going to be able to run to the sideline. You're not going to outrun those guys. At some point you got to turn the ball up and start running north and south. Third down and ten. Arstetter out wide right. Simone in the slot to the right for Lobestall. Foster on the blitz. Lobestall short hops at the Karstetter at the 39-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down and bring the punter, Reed Forrest, on for Washington State. That's got to be frustrating, too. One of the few times that Lobestall has been able to roll out, just fully step into a throw, and he just downs it. You see that he took that extra long stride when he threw that. As a quarterback, when you take longer strides, oftentimes you're going to throw that ball into the ground. Same as if you take a little bit shorter stride, you're obviously going to throw that ball a little bit high. 
Marshall Lobestall's mechanics, his fundamentals, weren't there on that play. Sixth punt of the night for Forrest. He's averaged just over 42 yards per punt. And that ball will bounce out of bounds. And it'll be Husky football. Today's first and ten marker is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino, welcoming the Spinners Friday, December 11th. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. Come on, Husky! First down and ten for the Huskies after the 29-yard Reed Forest punt. The Dogs take over at their own 46. Chris Polk is right now tied with Jake Locker for the freshman rushing record. It is now his as he goes into Cougar territory at the 48-yard line. So Chris Polk moves past Jake Locker as the all-time freshman rushing leader at Washington. This is uh, a great job of running with the football. I mean, he just lets all the rest of those guys kind of clear out as he runs that little stretch play, brings it all the way back across, and gets his shoulder pads going north and south, and made that look really easy. 21 carries, 103 yards, add to the total as he nears 1,000 yards down to the 35-yard line. And that may have gotten Chris Polk to 1,000 yards. The first freshman running back to reach that milestone in Husky history. Let's see where they mark it. That is, he's at 116 yards. That's 1,005 yards on the season for Chris Polk. Well, that's just remarkable. Consider how much they've struggled on offense and as a team to have that type of accomplishment as a running back. I, I think that says a lot about him and his teammates. And another big chunk of yardage, close to a 10-yard gain. And you know, there have been some outstanding backs over the years here at Washington. And he's certainly adding his name to a lengthy list and just a freshman. He's just a freshman. And he's the only one that's accomplished that. So, so far, he's going to be the guy to watch for the next couple of years around here. And I'm sure the Husky fans are excited that uh, he's playing here and not someplace else. Well, and, and guys, I think, too, when you've got a 1,000-yard back, regardless of whether he's a freshman or a senior, a lot of credit's got to go to those big boys up front. You know, they've been maligned, have this offensive line for the Huskies, and that's certainly something to build on, something they can take a lot of pride in. Polk again, you think about guys like Napoleon Kaufman and Chuck Robinson and Joe Steele back in the day out of Blanchett High School, to name just a few. And apologies to anyone. Corey we Dillon. Missed. Corey oh, Dillon. I've heard of that guy. <laughs> he had a pretty decent NFL he was career. Pretty, pretty decent. Of course, Corey transferred uh, into the UW, did not have four full years here, but made an impact in a major one while he was here. It was short lived, but uh, he made a huge impact. 24 carries, 127 yards for Polk. 25 carries now, a short gain on first down. The clock continues to roll, 7.43 left in the fourth quarter. Well, this is uh, this is the time of the of the game where they want to see the offense really start grinding it out. Those offensive linemen you gotta dig their heels in into the ground, come off the ball, fire, make sure that they keep the ball moving, keep the chains moving, keep the clock moving more most importantly. I know it's seven minutes and twenty seconds left in the game, but this is like really like the four minute offense. Locker with the pitch. Demetrius Bronson. Polk's back up, close to a first down before he's knocked out of bounds. Mike Ledgerwood down there. Also Terrence Hayward, the Cougars. Yeah, you got to be very careful. I know this is a kid not necessarily used to carrying the football a lot, but he luckily he switched that ball, gets it in his outside arm, but you don't want to fumble the football. You don't want to get out of bounds. What's important about the four-minute offense? You're trying to run time off the clock. Stay in bounds. I'm sure that's probably going to be a point of emphasis that gets stressed to him when he gets back over to the sideline. And there's Bronson, a freshman. Locker still with the football, with room. Cuts it to the outside. And is it a touchdown? It is for Jake Locker.
Well, as good as Chris Polk is, Jake Locker may still remain the most dangerous <laughs> running threat. He knows about Huskies. running the football, that's for sure. The other night, if you were watching that Texas A&M Texas game, you saw Colt McCoy throw for 300, run for like 170 yards rushing, and uh, I think Jake Locker is a better rusher than, than Colt McCoy. So he's he's got this guy's, this guy's the limit with him. He's a dynamic player, and uh, with him in the back there in the backfield. Sky's the limit for the Huskies. It's all Huskies, up by 30 on the Cougars. College football on FSN is brought to you by Anthony's Restaurants, serving the freshest Northwest seafood with great waterfront views. And by the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. Jake Locker with a 15-yard scoring run, extending the Husky lead to 30 to nothing here in the Apple Cup. That's a pretty decent day for Jake. He's as dynamic a player as there is in college football. Winston with the return and not much there as he's brought down out near the 17-yard line. Congratulations from Chris Polk to Locker and from Locker to Polk. So both had some very special moments on that drive. Jake with the touchdown and Polk not only setting a UW freshman rushing record, but becoming first Husky to rush for 1,000 yards as a freshman. 637 left here in the fourth quarter. Cougars will not be able to, for the first time in this series history, win three consecutive Apple Cup contests. Overstall with two wide receivers to each side. Karstetter. Gain of about four yards on the play. Who's to start today's game? Jake Locker, 48%. Husky defense, 41%. You can vote at 9-5-3-2-3. A, B, or C. The B being Jermaine Kirst. Jermaine's got a lot of room to make up. <laughs> Probably put Chris Polk on that list. Very good point. 25 carries, 130 yards, and a touchdown. Lobestall. Pitch made, good for a first down to Gino Simone. Mason Foster with a tackle. Gino's high school skyline with a huge game tonight in the Tacoma Dome in 4A state playoff action as Skyline will take on Bothell. Top two ranked teams in the highest classification in the state of Washington. Bothell won a uh, regular season matchup between the two teams. Three receivers to the left for Marshall Lobestall out of the shotgun. First down and ten as his receiver went down. Karstetter, Desmond Trufant on the coverage. Today's first and ten marker is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino. You know, I talk about being positive, Tom. I asked Coach Paul Wolf, you know, what, what can you take away that's positive from this season? He's like, you know, all these kids know where they're at. They know that they're 1-10, in 10, and they know the, the work that they have in front of them in order to get to be a football team. The other thing he says, they're just taking on a challenge, working really hard, and having a good attitude. Loose football, not free, free by Josh Gage, and it looked like the Huskies recovered. And it is Husky football. He's getting a little chippy in that pile. Daniel Teo Nesheim with the recovery as Gage forced the loose football. Yeah, Teo Nesheim being a senior, I'm sure that's probably one of those things that he'll remember. He'll take with him uh, long after his playing days are over here. Last shutout in an Apple Cup contest, November 21st, 1964. 14 to nothing ball game. Forty-five years. Forty-five years. You gotta go back to find the last shutout involving these two teams. Ronnie 
Fouch in at quarterback for Jake Locker. As Jake's night is over, that's the last shutout for a Husky football team in this series back in 1964. Alex Hoffman Ellis with the last stop on that play. Ronnie Fouch, who got a lot of activity last year when Jake Locker went down with the broken thumb in game four. In 1968, the Cougars pitched a shutout in this series, 24 to nothing over the Huskies. Five yard penalty, second down. All start against the Dodds. Ronnie Fouch, 6 1, sophomore out of Redlands, California. Last year's Apple Cup, Ronnie uh, 11 of 16 for 99 yards. This is his first playing time at quarterback this season. Every other snap taken by Jake Locker. Well, that'd be a big accomplishment for this program. I mean, uh, to pitch a shutout um, against their cross-state rivals. I mean, you can't ask for it. But like you said, 45 years since that's been done. Uh, regardless of... Demetrius Bronson lost the football uh, oh. inside the five-yard line. A terrific run. And it looked like he put the ball on the ground. Well, I'm right there at the end zone. Guys are calling him down. And I think there's a lot to be said. This could very well be a fumble. You know, guys, I'm trying to recall. Have we had one play tonight that is, has been reviewed that this, has led to any delay in this football game? This might be the one, though. Uh, you look at it. I don't think his knee is down. I don't see a Ball's challenge. Out. I don't see a challenge, and they're running the play. Well, that should have been a fumble. Yep. Now we have a penalty, and this may allow for this play to get reviewed and give Washington State possession. Let's see. Offside by contact on the defense number 95. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. All right, Steve Sarkeesian looking over the play. Governor Christine Gregoire of the state of Washington. And that's what's up for grabs tonight, although I think we can comfortably say after spending two years in Pullman, the next 365 days we'll have the Apple Cup in Seattle. Very interesting. <laughs> now this, look, this is, I don't know if that offside that, was on purpose. That might have been purposeful. That, but either way, it's a huge break for the Cougars because this is going to be Washington State football. Very smart play, if that's indeed what they plan to do. See the hit by Easton Johnson, the converted wide receiver. He started knocking that ball loose, number 81 right there. Hayward comes in. Yeah, he just pulled on it until it came out. Yeah, I think this, I think that's going to go Washington State's way. Well, it's this angle is definitive. That ball's out. He's not even close to the ground. Why it took him that long to review it, I'm not sure. It, the, the line judge on that side was real indecisive. I was standing right next to him and didn't know which way he wanted to go with that call. It was very, very late by the time he said that player was down. So on the field, it may have been some in question, but clearly on the video, it shows that ball is loose. Well, it won't impact the outcome, but I would be curious if that was a Cougar defender intentionally drawing that penalty to prevent Washington from running the play. It is. That's a very clever heads-up play right there. <laughs> so Bronson will likely uh, get tagged with a lost fumble. You know, if they were talking to us, we could have taken care of it for them by now. <laughs> We'd have this all settled. That's right. We give, we give the Cougars First the ball. First and ten for That's the Cougars. Right. We, we keep rolling. Now, the bottom line is, in all these situations, to get it right. <laughs> That's and it. And we, we assume that Take the they time will that get it this takes. one right. Yep. Just look at the uh, numbers tonight as I glance over at the stats. 451 yards of total offense for the Huskies. Just 150 yards.
yards of total offense for the Cougars, who averaged 256 coming into the game. After review, it's been determined that the runner was not down when the ball came out. Therefore, Washington State will take possession of the ball on the three-yard line. First down. There you have it. First and ten for the Cougars. So, that, so, all those Husky fans. The, the they, angry Husky they didn't fans. like the last two years. <laughs> I tell you, that is the first for me, though, fellas, to actually have a play reviewed after there's been a penalty on the ensuing play. Granted, the ball was not snapped, but the fact that there was still a penalty, I've, I've not seen that before. And I think a lot of Husky fans are saying the same thing. That may be the best offside penalty of the season. It was. It was very Cougars. timely. <laughs> So Marshall Lobeson will jog back out onto the field with the Cougar offense, hoping to at least get some points on the board and avoid the shutout here at Husky Stadium as they trail 30 to nothing with 4.07 left to play, and they'll have to execute with the boos raining down. Well, they, they need to score some points, I mean, just for the confidence and the morale of their team. I mean, defense has been out there all day long, playing really hard, scrapping fighting and uh, just hanging in there and offense needs to kind of get some put some plays together do their part and at least get some points on the board that guys they just need to get a little bit of push to get out of their own end zone and you can hear the fired up husky fans the handoff to tardy and nothing there josh gage Number 24 with the stop. 6'2", 225 senior out of Huntington Beach, California. Yeah, I don't know how confident they are of dropping back the pass because you've been in your own end zone and you don't want to you don't want to take a safety here. Loss of the yard, second and eleven. Receiver to each side for Lobestall. As a receiver and a first down, Daniel Blackledge with the catch tackled by Josh Gage. Yeah, that was a great job by just uh, a little three-step drop. Get the ball out of your hand as quick as possible. Run a little hitch right on the outside. Make the catch and move the chain. First and 10 at the 15. You see the communication that takes place on that Cougar offensive line. Tardy going nowhere. And a loss of two yards on the play. Trenton Tuiasasopo, number 57 with the stop. Senior out of Mariner High School in Everett. And that's the frustrating part for Cougar fans is offensively, for every step this team takes forward, they take another step or even two steps back. And there's just no continuity whatsoever, and that's just the way it's been all year long. Trent McCousin of former Huskies Marcus and Zach Tuiasasopo. Second down and 12 for the Cougars. Overstall with time, not anymore. And he's brought down Tui Asasopo in on the play. Daniel Teo Nessheim as well. Yeah, that was a great job of just collapsing the pocket on him. He couldn't even scramble to get out of there. But, you know, I, I think Washington State's making, really making a, a, a case just about sort of the way that they get their information from the sideline. It's very distracting. Just sitting here watching it, I can't imagine what it's like as a player being out there and having to wait to get a play from the sideline each and every play. They're down in 15. Ten seconds on the play clock, and the play just goes in now. Four seconds on the play clock. Robustar. Karstetter, the completion. He'll be well short of a first down. Mason Foster with the tackle for the Huskies. You know, the, the tough part about that for Lobestall is that each and every time he knows he's going to get pressure, so he's not coming off his primary read. It, you can watch his eyes and see where his head's at. 
he's looking at one guy and one guy only. And so if that ball is complete, great. If it's not, the ball is either going to be thrown into traffic or he's going to be brought down. And that's all part of that confidence thing that we've talked about several times throughout this ball game. We are inside a minute left in the 2009 Apple Cup. Reed Forrest punting away. Kevin Aguilar for the Huskies signals the fair catch and makes it near midfield. Got a Husky and a Cougar locked up back at the 35 yard line. They're separated. No harm, no foul on that play. And this is the final game of the season for Washington State. They'll be saying farewell to 14 seniors on the roster for the Huskies. They'll be right back here next Saturday to wrap up the season and conference play against a very good California Golden Bear Club. Well, this will be the type of win that they'll need to propel them into next week. Get ready for that football game. That's going to be, a, am sure, a very hard fall game. for the handoff and carrying the football Curtis Shaw for the Huskies let's take a look at our Widmer moment and it's Jake Locker getting it done on the ground 10 carries 94 yards through the air a 50 yard touchdown on that play Jake 18 of 28 one interception one touchdown 196 yards it was a very Locker-esque performance as Jake Locker will be an Apple Cup winner for the first time in his career. And Shaw with the carry. Eight seconds and that will do it. Domination by the Washington Huskies over the Washington State Cougars in the 102nd edition of the Apple Cup as the Huskies get it done 30 to nothing. Very impressive stuff, Jason, from not only Jake Locker, Chris Polk, but that Husky defense pitching its first shutout in this series since 1964. Boy, and the defense did a fantastic job. They continued to give their offense opportunity, opportunity after opportunity. The first half was about big plays, and the second half, the Washington offense just systematically wore down that Cougar defense and really controlled the line of scrimmage. Let's connect with Angie Menting. All right, Coach, before this game, you said to me, besides the win, the one thing you wanted was enthusiasm. You wanted your kids to have fun. Quite safe to say that was enthusiastic and fun. Yeah, I thought we did. Our kids played hard right till the end, and we wanted that to happen. And uh, it was fun. It was exciting. We played physical. Uh, so proud of our defense, you know. First shutout in, uh, in this under Nick's you know, regime, and uh, it's exciting for them, I know. It's been a lot of regimes before we had a shutout. 40-something years or something, I believe they were singing in my ear. Uh, what about this crowd? Have you ever heard a crowd this loud for a 30 nothing blowout? It was awesome. It was great. And I think that the passion they showed with the turnover there on the one and to get that stop was huge for everybody involved. All right, so uh, you're one and zero now as uh, as uh, or in Apple Cups rather as the Huskies head coach. When you look at film, what are you going to be most proud of? That we played hard. We ran the ball well. We stopped the run on defense. And that's what we want to do coming into this game. All right, coach. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right, let's get it back out to Brad Adam. Brad. Hey, come on, well, Angie. Thank you very much. As she mentioned, guys. Steve Sarkeesian now 1-0 as coach of the Huskies in the Apple Cup. Congratulations to him and the Huskies. Brad Adam, Jason Gester, and Damon Heward. We've got some uh, <laughs> some uh, fans behind us excited about imagine, this game. Imagine that. Yeah, imagine that, yeah. Uh, quickly, Damon, yep. you've got now, what, 365 days to brag? Absolutely. Is that how this works now? Oh, it's great. Very workmanlike victory. We did our job. I think this is the score kind of everyone expected. Vegas got it right. You know, I didn't really want to wager my friends and give them 24 and a half points, but I'm feeling pretty good right now this big victory. And the Cougar side, well, we'll get your take in just a minute, Mr. Gesser. We've got a trophy presentation to get to, more highlights, lots of reaction. You're watching College Football Northwest on FSN, presented by Soquami Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment and dining destination. College Football Northwest on FSN, presented by Snoqualmie Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment and dining destination. There is the Apple Cup trophy being presented to the home team, Purple and White, University of Washington. 30 to nothing winners over Washington State. They claim the 102nd edition of the Apple Cup. There will be no three-peat 
for the Cougs. The Huskies dominate today, and gentlemen, we saw this game. When you get shut out, it's pretty easy to say that defense dominated you, and that was the case today, really setting the tone. UW's defense came to play today, Damon. Absolutely. Give lots of credit to Nick Holt and that defense. 30 to nothing, shutting out any Pac-10 offense, holding them to 180 yards. There's something to build on there, and I think these guys will carry it on next week into the Cal game for sure. Here you see some of the highlights here. They rallied to the ball. Big gang tackles. They hit the quarterbacks, whoever was in there, all day long in their face. Gave these guys no time to throw the football. Again, lots of credit to Nick Holt. You know, this year they've kind of been labeled a bend, don't break defense. Well, today they didn't bend. Today they didn't break. They broke off the Cougars in a big way, and it sure was fun to watch. So the defense dominates for the Huskies. Defense played pretty well for the Cougs as well, even though they Love lose. It. 30 to nothing, kind of ironic to say their defense played yeah. well, but the X Factor we talked about, Jake Locker, made the big plays, dominant uh, player on the field today for the Huskies. This kid is special, and, and what he showed today, throwing the football, running the football, how he can take a game over on his shoulders, he, he's a special talent, and, and really deserves, and, and really, des from watching that game today, yeah. deserves all the credit he's been getting as a top quarterback in the country, and uh, impressed me. Yeah, okay. Impresses the Cougar. That's a good thing. Played in his first <laughs> Apple Cup. Won his first Apple Cup game. And Angie Mentic just caught up with Jake on the field. All right, here we go. You told me earlier in the week that the one thing you wanted to do during your time here was beat the Cougars and win an Apple Cup. Is it as you imagined? Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was a, a, a great experience. You know, obviously there's a lot of emotions leading up to this game. And uh, to be on the winning end of things is... Uh, uh, it's, it's an awesome feeling. All right, you had the rushing record for a freshman. Chris Polk beats your record, gets a, to over a thousand yards. The first player to ever do that at the University of Washington. I, I imagine you don't mind, though. I'm proud of.